Okay, so we'll get back into it. I was intending on tearing apart the ship in one go yesterday, but couldn't resist a little fake out. Mord Cal was playing the Mortuary Assistant, a game I really like and want to see more people play. Unfortunately, Mord Cal was just uh, not absorbed into the horror, I suppose. He, he didn't seem phased by it whatsoever. I, on the other hand, thought it was the spookiest game I've ever played. Never mind that though, let's get that timer going once more. And, well sadly we're starting off on one of the far less interesting parts. I already did control demolition of pretty much the whole ship. Mm, well, the large important part of the ship. And now it's just a case of using our super Benghazi man hands. Bengalese man, we're not in Benghazi. <laughs> and lobbing the remains over to our truck. We had a prediction, so people were betting on how long this would take, and it's looking like the quickest prediction, which was under four and a half hours, is going to be coming true. I can't think of a reason that tearing apart the rest of the ship is going to take more than an hour and a half. Germans and German analogues only get phased by horrors such as missing receipts. <laughs> yeah, I think the, the problem is we had a Germanic person playing a game that was centered around just doing a job. So the only horror could be not doing that job very efficiently. Maybe the game is going to be more receptive to people and cultures that are more based around not working at all. Because you gotta get your job done in that game. Maybe we need a Croatian playing it. But I also think to really enjoy a horror game, You've got to let yourself be sucked in. If you just sit back and don't take the situation very seriously, then you're only going to do harm to yourself. Well, to your enjoyment of the game. Then again, he said he enjoyed it plenty enough, he just didn't find it uh, horrifying. But no, that, that game was just... it really came out of nowhere for me. I did not expect it to be as absorbingly terrifying as it was. I just finished watching you drive trucks for five and a half hours. Is that the VOD for uh, the Christmas trucking? Quite fortunate that VOD survived. I was dubious about the Christmas playlist I was using actually being royalty free, but it looks like it was. The only thing that did get flagged actually was the Mr. Hanky Christmas Carols, the single song that health linked did get flagged, um, did demonetize the video, and blocked it in Russia. And only Russia, strangely enough. However, I think, much to YouTube's credit, their little button that uh, mutes only a song, I think it worked. Oh yeah, this man's got incredible throw. I thought it was impressive when he was throwing 60 kilo boxes. But after numerous upgrades, we are now able to package up 180 kilo boxes into these weird recycle boxes. It's a really nice touch that the upgrades are visual as well. Completely unnecessary, but it just smacks of extra polish. Perhaps bizarrely placed extra polish on a game which is fairly basic in a lot of ways. But I appreciate it. Our gloves are upgraded, our hammer is upgraded, our saw is upgraded, and we can visually appreciate it all. And that's important to me. Wonder if we'll ever get to the point where picking up all of this loose stuff is just not worth it. I still have this feeling in my head that in this game it's probably far more efficient to focus on the big jobs, get the large craned items away, and not bother with all these little bits ha uh, lying around. Because look at it, it's only 
It's only 16 kilos and 8 kilos here and there of... This must be low alloy metal, right? Yeah, low alloy steel. It's not needed for any contract, it's only going to add to the currently 5 tons of metals that we've already refined for ourselves. At this point it doesn't matter if it's high alloy metal, low alloy metal, or even if it's gold. Because it's all just getting liquidated into general metal. But I said I was going to nose to tail these things, and that's exactly what I plan on doing. Now, this is the next part that I want to take out. And that means we're going to have to remove all these little bits here. But I spent just about every Bengalese dollar that I had on upgrading my tools. And now we cut these things off in about a second. Instead of about five seconds, which is what it was taking us before. I don't get why it demonetizes you. Think they take a percentage of pro Oh man, yeah, no, it just don't work that way. If it detects a minute of copywritten music in an otherwise five hour video, you lose everything. They take everything. You get nothing. I often say that I'm not in this gig for the money. But that still leaves me a little miffed when that kind of thing happens. Even more so when it's a false positive or a fraudulent claim. The avenues for contesting it are not great. And there isn't even an option to contest on the grounds that it's a false positive or that it's uh, been claimed by a fraudulent party. Pretty much your only options are, do you own the music, or do you have express permission for the music? It's like, well that's not relevant here, it doesn't matter, that's your only respite. So... It is certainly miffing right. What is still connecting this? I reckon... We need to get the old torch out, and anti-weld you. Oh yeah, Pandy, you're right, you're right. Far be it for me to question our... Benevolent overlords. There we go. Take it away, my crane operating friend. I don't want you to take any of my precious low alloy metal with you. Farewell. People have asked if we can take a ride on that. The answer is not really. If you're on top of that thing when uh, the crane is trying to grab it, it just freezes where it is and tells you to get off. I'm just hearing the word get off reminds me of a, an old advertisement that was running in Scotland. A very angry Scottish man is trying to place a phone call. But a family member is on the phone and he's just very angrily saying, Get off the internet! And then he, he gets really angry and smashes up the whole house. And it's an advertisement for getting this brand new broadband that is sweeping across the country very slowly. Don't be stuck on dialogue. Sometimes it's annoying when old advertisements stay stuck in your head and you wish they would dislodge. But that ad still cracks me up to think about. I suspect they only aired that ad in Scotland, but it would have been very amusing if they had aired it across the rest of the UK. Gonna get those positive depictions of Scots in while you can. Oh, it took its sweet time. Uh, where I'm from, we had to sign a petition to get broadband. Telecom companies weren't about to 
to drag internet around my incredibly rural home. So they said, tell you what, get 500, uh, not 500, get 100 signatures of people who say that they will uh, they'll subscribe to broadband services if we bring it into the area. And, you know, where I'm from, many people didn't really operate computers, let alone the internet or have any need for broadband, but a friend of mine was really, really into his wargaming. And he wanted to get online for playing it online. And dial-up just wasn't cutting it anymore. This wasn't Age of Empires. So he went around and got those signatures. I'm pretty sure that many of them were fraudulent. But sure enough, he got them. And Broadband did eventually roll out in our area. And it was agonizingly slow and terrible Broadband, but it was still better than dial-up. My dial-up connection back then was a staggering 14 kilobits. 14! Holy moly! Think of all the uh, stuff that I accessed back then with those kinds of blazing speeds. I used to just load the page and then go to sleep. And then when I woke up, I could enjoy whatever I had loaded. Good times. Sounds like dial-up in my area maxes out at 34 kilobits. Jesus. Are you like rural Australia? I am all but certain Nyx was linking the XKCD comic where the punchline is, could you look a little blockier? It's my best guess. Just when I thought this would be an easy case of chunking our way along, we run into a slight complication. Got all this here. It's a lot more to tear down, and because it's more spread out, it's not going to be quite as fast to tear apart. But tear it apart we shall. I'm just going to bring my truck considerably closer. Ugh. My truck, which is currently hauling 15 tons of scrap. I do wonder if they had plans to make the truck have a capacity. Mm, no, bring it a little further forward. There we go. Yeah, so the, the parallels with the hard space ship breaker are hard to ignore. And in fact, I feel that several times every stream there are people asking, oh hey, have you played Hard Space Shipbreaker? And I don't mind answering it several times, I mean, even if I get asked it several times, for the pe people asking, they're usually only asking once. But yes, I did play the game, and it's the superior game to this, but the faults are too large. The unskippable communism in that game so misguided as well. Just give me more ships, give me custom ships, give me a workshop for the ships. But nope, you have to sit there, not able to move, not able to think, just being forcibly signed up for the in-game union, which is banned by your very benevolent overlords, who give you this opportunity to make obscene amounts of money. And not only that, they give you the greatest health insurance ever conceived. I mean, can you imagine that? You're working for a place, oh, what's health insurance like? Yeah, they make you immortal. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you're working here, you can't die. But that's horrible! Oh, oh, god, no. We must revolt against this.
And you know what your reward for sticking through all of that is? It just clears your debt. For you. The, I wanted to be chipping away at that debt like I'm playing Animal Crossing or Freedom Wars. But no. You punch capitalism in the face, have your debt taken away, yet you continue to work there. It's just... Uh, Somebody clearly used the game as a vector for one of their power fantasies, and it well and truly ruined the game. I like to think that if a game's gameplay is amazing, nothing can ruin that, but no. <laughs> that, that decision, that way of thinking, has been rethought thanks to Hard Space Shipbreaker. It was just so bad. Come on. There we go. Yeah, since this isn't particularly tall, we can only really get one layer of controlled demolition, and it's not going to be that immense. Hmm, this could actually take longer than I thought. Perhaps the people that bet on this being extremely fast may have to rethink things. I've got about an hour and a half. If I don't get this done within an hour and a half, then the people that took the fastest bet ain't getting their payout. They are the majority, though. So they stand to earn the least. Still more than doubling their, their bet, though. I'm not usually one for doing loads of bets. However, since we missed the weekly one-shot last Sunday, it seemed fitting. Hmm. Need to get up there. It seemed fitting to have a substitute bet. Well done, actually. I could just walk up here, can't I? Yeah! We actually preserved one set of stairs. Miraculous. Deeper in debt, letting Jake get debt at all. This seems like an issue for the lender. <laughs> It's like the saying goes, right? You owe the bank a hundred dollars, that's your problem. You owe the bank a million dollars, that's the bank's problem. Oh, I love that decompression sound. In terms of actions, this is probably one of the least enjoyable in the game. following along to melt this is a bit yeah. but the payoff oh yeah that's good there's also a bit of finality to doing this because that's usually one of the last actions you have to do for a ship That's a good song, you know? Lovely. Now, my question is, do we just tear all this apart? Well, whether we do or we don't, it's still apparently... Not unlocked, it says. I wonder if that's because of these. Goodbye, rivets. Hmm. Do I actually crane this away? I do? Nice. Okay. Always happy to have more bits to crane away. It's one of the more satisfying ways to get rid of something. There we go, I knew I didn't have to do any sawing here. <laughs> A very dark song, you think? Well, the idea of uh, finishing your workday only to end up deeper in debt 
It is pretty grim. Kind of reminds me of uh, selling your soul to the company store. I don't know the lyrics to that one though, other than I sold my soul to the company store. It's the same song. Oh, well, there we go. That was a bit in my head telling me something you're thinking is wrong, Jake. And that was it. Oh, well, I guess I do know some of his lyrics then. Yeah, would you look at that? Inside our truck is indeed those 16 tons. Right, are you ready to ready to come off now? You are. And whilst you're doing that, I'll take care of you. Off it goes. Okay, anything else to take away from you? I suspect I need to... Oh no, wow, it's already ready to go. Excellent. I thought I'd have to punch the rivets out from above. I guess I already had. Okay, sweet. Good job past Jake. Not bad. Is he coming to get this? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> God, this really speaks to a fantasy, doesn't it? Past Jake was so nice, present Jake is just a former shadow of him. I'm sure I can do something nice for future Jake. Question is, what's he going to do for me? from here. I think I'll punch the rivets out of the ground. Which, of course, Super Bengali Man can just do with his fingers, but he likes to keep up appearances, so he'll use the hammer. The hammer that does not one swing. When we started this ship, it took four swings of this hammer to accomplish what we now do in one. go, but the good old power of the Big Mac Index ensures that our handful of Bengali dollars are able to buy some sweet upgrades for our tools. Almost called them weapons again there. They're not weapons. Maybe in the wrong hands, but ours are the very right and proper hands. Future Jake doesn't offer incentives, only threats. <laughs> I can't chop off my arm to spite past Jake. It doesn't work that way. 
her space time. Swings a hammer harder than John ever did, yeah well. Super Bengali man here isn't getting it caught out by a screamer. What screamer? John's appeared in a fair few of our games, hasn't he? He was in State of Decay. He was in Room World. Hell, he's even made appearances in Caesar. It's thanks to the Illustra John that we had to fuel Caesar's alcoholism. A map that I was unable to complete. A map that very few people have been able to complete. He also did Blood Under the Bridge and Islands of Pain, all maps that bested me. I like to think that I am one of the world's best Caesar 3 players. However, there are those out there that I cannot hold a candle to. Troll Goat and Bruegel and Whisperwinds are three names that immediately come to mind. Golden Oldies have been on that old ass Caesar 3 forum for decades. Bruegel in particular, the, the kind of stuff he does in that game, just masterpieces. I could never hope to even emulate what he does. Oftentimes when he's finished a Caesar 3 city, uh, I, I, I spend a very long time studying it and I still don't understand how he has accomplished what he has accomplished. At least with the other guys, usually after a while I can understand how they've accomplished what they've done, but not Bruegel. Holy moly, that guy's a monster at the game. I never did finish Pain. The, the map bested me. Then again, I never went back to it because it, it was a horrible map to play. No space to build anything, no money to start with. No room for an industry, let alone the population there. It was incredible. I don't think John has finished any map he's made. That's not how he operates. That's not his problem. <laughs> and I can appreciate that. Not my problem is one of my favorite things to say. Because it's a philosophy I very much believe in. Why would I make all these things that are not my problem my problem? Sounds like a way to make yourself miserable. Yeah, you know, one of the comments that often comes up in chat when I'm playing one of these devilishly difficult Caesar 3 maps is hey, did the author ever beat this? The answer's generally gonna be no. That's fine, right? You don't need to be great at Caesar to make great Caesar 3 maps. I'm talking a lot about Caesar for a guy that has not really played the game this year. This year? I'm pretty sure I played a lot of it this year. It's just that uh, about half a year ago, things petered out. Caesar 3 is an itch that comes and goes. And I've played a lot of custom maps this year. Enough to take care of the itch for a good wee while. It will return though, it always does. It usually returns around this time of year actually because normally I head home and there's just something about being back home that makes me want to play Caesar 3. Reminds me of uh, setting it up on the old ancient PC that would sit in the corner of the main room. Something about being on that PC would fill me with a desire to play Caesar 3. But I mean, that old PC is long gone. And I head home this time of year far less often these days. I mean, hey, it's a stressful journey. Tis the season for nostalgia, yeah? That as well. 
fair point. Fairly good point. Right, clear out this, and there's probably another large part of the tuna fish that we can get rid of. This boat is called the tuna. I realized as I said it, that didn't sound like it made any sense. Well, actually, it was nice to see Baron play through Caesar 3. He played through the entire peaceful campaign and he got it done in eight hours. Very impressive. And he certainly could have done it in under eight hours if he had not messed up Valencia as badly as he did. After after we were talking about one Valencia, he, he opened up with Valencia saying that it's one of his favorite Caesar, it is his favorite Caesar 3 campaign map, apparently. And just as he said that, I said, man, I don't like Valencia. It's my least favorite peaceful map, if not my least favorite map in the whole game. Which was rather funny. And he said that he liked it because it's uh, such a sandbox. No real challenge to it. And then uh, he shouldn't have said that because he tempted fate. Shouldn't be focusing only on his shortcomings there. It was a good run. Unlike me, he didn't mess up Caesarea. When I had to do the campaign, I messed up Caesarea. Almost cost me the run it did. It certainly put things on a dicier spin than they otherwise could have been. But maybe that's for the better, right? Would have been no doubt in anyone's mind that I was going to brutalize that challenge until Caesarea came along and said, oh yeah? I had not played Caesarea in quite some time. And the biggest thing that caught me out there was that you don't get a bailout loan. So you can't really afford any mistakes in Caesarea. Not only that, you start out with that god-awful uh, pre-made city that immediately catches fire the moment you unpause. And not only that, they blasphemy Mars, god of war, so he sends an attack your way. Of course, the thing is that attack is dealt with as long as you... If you just do nothing, the attack is going to... Um, is going to fail and die, but... Not doing anything is tough. Because if you do nothing, everything just burns down. If you just delete the starting city, then the attack will kill you. Oh god, that's another thing, the, the 24 hour stream with Carthage restarting. Rough. I was so close on that, right? All I had to do was finish the damn campaign. And then in came some unreasonable demands. It wasn't just redo Carthage, but it was like redo Carthage, but also to a much higher standard than you did. And after having streamed for about 24 hours, and not just Caesar, we had Professor Layton, we had Doom, we had DDR, that was a mistake. I love me some DDR, but uh, DDR when you've been up streaming for 24 hours. And it wasn't easy DDR either. Oh boy, I was, was on my ruddy last legs. But that's okay, some streams are meant to be bad ideas. That way it feels all the more better when you do some good ideas. Like destroying things in Ship Graveyard Simulator 2. All because of the totally reasonable Baron Coaster request. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really came to understand some shortcomings I had in coming up with a concept for that stream. And one big thing is do not give the viewers that much flexibility. They will turn it against you. I should have given some far more rigid things to choose from rather than just some vague, hey, tell me whatever and I'll do whatever. No, no, no. People... People are setting out to make your life miserable. Don't aid the process. Now I love my life, so that's a lot of work. And that just makes people relish it all the more. 
Come on. Down you come. And you. I also think the hull parts should be worth more. Because it would be a greater incentive to completely tear apart the ship if taking out the hull would give you more than just a very small amount of uh, crummy metal. Look at this thing, it's worth 800 kilos. But 800 kilos of metal, we've already got 22, 23,000 tons of metal right here. So doing all that work to crane this part out, mm, I mean I'm doing it because I want to do it, I enjoy tearing apart these ships entirely. That's my intrinsic motivation, but the extrinsic motivation of some in-game reward for the action doesn't seem to quite line up. Over we go, trick shot! In it lands. But I still want you a little closer, please. Oh, Jesus. Is a job well done, not enough new? Oh, it is, that's the reason I'm doing it. But it would still be nice to have more. It's like doing a job you love, and you're having your performance review with a boss. And they say, oh, you, you enjoy your work there? You go, oh yeah, I love doing this job. Okay, so you won't mind if we, you know, don't give you a raise. So, well, maybe I will mind. satisfaction from a job well done is actually getting some value out of your labor. I'd have enjoyed my work at Paradox, but I did want to be paid for the privilege. One mistake I made is I didn't leverage my streaming stuff enough. I should have said, well, come on, I'm, I'm practically doing another job for you here. But Paradox was not well known for paying well. I don't know if I ever mentioned that much about working at Paradox, but holy moly, they are misers. Good lord. I guess a strong culture of cost saving. Because although the joke is, uh, ooh, small indie company, please don't be mean. Paradox is a bit of a big boy these days. But they weren't always. And they've been in some dire financial straits back in the day. We're talking like before CK2 and DU4 and stuff that made Paradox games far more mainstream, especially City Skylines. And from the grapevine, I've heard they've gotten a lot better at paying people, but when I was there, they were not. <laughs> not so great at paying people. There was also a lot of discrepancy and... Um, <laughs> Apparently, culturally, in Sweden, it's taboo to talk about your wages. And I think they took advantage of that to make sure people would not uh, would not share when they're making more than others. <laughs> At the time, though, I didn't really care that much. I was, I was working a job that I enjoyed, and it wasn't like I was getting paid peanuts. Just, uh, you know, on reflection, could have gotten paid a whole lot more. But I'm not greedy, right? Right. As long as it kept the haggis on the table, well, it would keep some haggis on the table, but <laughs> Stockholm is a hell of an expensive place to live. I was thinking about a conversation just earlier today that I had. Uh, the conversation was years ago, but I was thinking about it earlier today. Uh, I was talking with an artist at Paradox. 
And uh, I think we were, yeah, we were talking about money and the cost of living in Sweden. And I must have said something along the lines of, Christ, you know, it's one of the things I don't like about living here is how expensive it is. And he was just like, well, does it really matter? You know, you go to the shops and you buy a bag of sugar. And how much is it? Oh, it's 30 to 50 crowns, I guess. And then I'm, I'm going to buy uh, some wheat or some rice or whatever. What does it cost? 30 to 50 crowns, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I strongly disagreed with that idea. He seemed to be rather blasé with things costing money. You know, just, oh, it costs money, well, whatever. That seems like a very Stockholmer way to think about things. Well, no thank you. Now I move to Hungary and there's no way in hell that a bag of sugar in Hungary is going to set you back 30 to 50 crowns, I guess. That's a man with no Scottish blood at all. Not even 1%. No, no, no. The, the man was exceptionally Swedish. Sounds like a negative interaction, but I really like the guy. I'm not going to name names. But I suspect he would know. <laughs> he would know that I'm talking about him from that. Exceptionally skilled artist as well. I hear everything just smashing apart behind me here. How are we doing on time? We have one hour left to tear apart the entire rest of the ship. Where does that time go? We've been playing for almost an hour so far today. Don't get nervous now. I'm quite confident I'll have this done within another half hour. <laughs> Paradox already was not exactly paying well from the audiences knew even well before they went public. But like I said, on the grapevine I'm hearing they're a lot better at it now. But it wasn't just the um, not paying so great, it was also the, the rubbish they'd feed you about it. They love to tell you that they pay uh, competitive industry rates. And they would back that up saying, oh yeah, we're, we've compared to these companies. And they'd compare to like really small indie companies in Sweden. Not, uh, not like Starbreeze or Dice. So they would choose the comparison points and then say, oh look, we compare favorably. And then again, I try not to be greedy about these things. I mean, greed is good, but there comes a point where it's too overwhelming. My favorite idea of being rich is being stress-free. Then again, we'll see how that position holds. <laughs> Maybe one day I do get a taste for the, the rich life. And then before you know it, we're going to have nothing but sponsored runs on this channel. I was talking earlier about wanting a new chair. This, this uh, Ikea Marcus that I've got my arse firmly parched on has been serving me well enough for the past 10 years, but it's kind of starting to fall apart. Well, you know, maybe somebody comes along and says, hey, we've got this awesome chair for you, just do a sponsorship deal. And I go, oh, yeah, sure, why not? And then before you know it, no fun games ever again. Just sold out to the highest bidder. Man, I have some good ideas sometimes. I, I have had so many of those offers, Seru. And the crazy thing is they're some of the highest paying offers that I get. It's, it's pretty much, oh yeah, just, just mention us for 30 seconds, we'll give you a thousand bucks. Mad. Thump, 
things, uh, they want you to run X amount of promotions per stream for a certain amount of streams, and they'll uh, they'll pay you flat amount plus signups and whatnot. And down you go. A lot of them will say, here's an offer, but we're not going to tell you a monetary amount. You tell us what you think you'd want. And that's a clever way to do it from their end, although I don't like it. That way they can just get lots of people coming back with their own offers and then pick the cheapest ones. Or at least the best ratio of uh, influence to cost. But I've never taken a sponsorship yet. I'm not saying it'll never happen, but if something, if something came along that I really believed in, I'd consider it. One thing that did tempt me was an energy drink, I believe it was. And I did think, you know, if this stuff is good, I wouldn't, I would have no problem uh, being sponsored by that for DDR runs. But uh, turned out they only operated in the UK. They thought I was a UK streamer. Common misconception. Dominion 6 DDR pad gaming chair combo. Oh my days, yeah. You know, well, there's a thought, right? Imagine there's a new DDR pad developer that comes out. They've made a DDR pad. They reach out to me and they say, hey, we're the makings of these DDR Pro metal pads. And I look at them and I think, oh, well, affordable, available, that sounds good. I'd probably say something like, well, send me a send me a trial pad or whatever and if i think it's good i would i wouldn't have much of a problem promoting that would that be a problem i don't think it'd be a problem for me if it was good if it was ass then then no way would i want to say that it's good or maybe i would say that it's terrible i'm not contractually obliged to say anything i think is bad as good or the other way around I wouldn't be against you taking sponsor. I've heard that plenty of times, but I, I don't really care what anyone else thinks about it. It's what I think about it. I am very attached to the stream. Feels good to have something that I've worked on so long and still continue to enjoy. If I were to fill it with something that I don't like, I'd really feel like I'm just shoot my own life in the foot. I've had plenty enough people asking for face cam, I still don't want to do it. Oh well now we're getting to the real tempting stuff, the whiskey sponsorships. Well, those aren't going to be coming in, I can't imagine that... Oh well no no no, take it all back. Just recently, Jameson's been running whiskey ads on Twitch. So maybe... No, 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 I'd never be promoting Jameson, so don't get me wrong, but... Maybe, just maybe... They're seeing the utilities. Right, can this be walkie-talkied away? Absolutely, but it's still connected. <laughs> yeah, there we go. As soon as you see my face, then you decide, yeah, maybe we don't need face cam. This is so good, and this was so sorely missing from the first game. Actually detaching the large bits so we can have them craned away. It was so commonly requested for the first game as well. This is Jake with another sponsor stream from Dark Young Enterprises Me. Oh no, we're in the bad timeline. Yeah, bad for who? Am I going to lose this thing when that gets craned away? Let's not risk it. Said I'm nose to tailing this thing. No half measures. Hey, didn't even lock on. Didn't even need to lock on. Hmm? 
What kind of whiskies that want a sponsorship might not be what you'd want to be the face for? Hmm. I think I've burnt too many bridges to ever get an Irish whiskey sponsorship. That's fine by me. I've never had an Irish whiskey that I enjoy. Maybe that'll change someday. Some Hungarian whiskey. Yeah, I was not taken by the one whiskey that I had, but that was a foolish, foolish decision on my part. It's absolutely tourist bait. But hey, I, I am a tourist in Budapest. Nah, this one is in the bag. There's very little left of this ship. We did get a comparison number though. I believe Acronymous came in and said that it took him five hours to completely disassemble this ship. So that, uh, I, I forget if that came in before or after the bets were placed. So I don't know if anybody based it on that. But it looks like we're going to be coming in under four. That was after. There we go. Bergon says, looks interesting, but it seems a bit too much like actual work. I see where you're coming from, but I don't particularly mind worky games, as long as it's fun. It's like that Nintendo guy says. It's not fun, why bother? I don't necessarily agree with that, but I do find this to be a whole lot of fun. I don't even mind games that mimic some actual jobs I've had. I don't mind payday. <laughs> get my representation, uh, representation as a security guard in-game and it's just getting shot at. Oh. Now, why is Bane not crying blood about the poor security guards getting shot but he needs to be sent his therapy bill whenever you shoot a civilian? Payday 2 is so good. If I'd had more time last night I was actually planning on firing it up and playing it but Alas, seldom are there enough hours in the day to play all the games I want to play. <laughs> really wish they didn't do what they did with Payday 3. Did you play Payday 3? Uh, there's no way in hell I would play that game with Always Online. Always online, even when playing single player? Yeah, no thank you. If they got rid of that in the pirated version, I'd probably grab the pirated version. And yeah, I absolutely advocate piracy. So often it is the moral imperative. Gabe was right. Piracy is almost always a service problem. If you get a better service with a pirated copy, why in God's name would you pay for it? You wouldn't download a rusty old ship, would you? <laughs> Suppose not. Ah, right, we're still attached up there. Let's get the old rope out. <laughs> really freaking cool. I actually did pick up a DLC pack for this game, or the DLC pick. I got the warships. 
So the ship we're going to do after this will be one of those warships. And I believe all the warships are full, complete ships. Not just part of a ship. And that's always... That's always nice. You're still connected, apparently? To what? I think I cut you off in every... Wait, I didn't cut that part off? I thought I just did. No, apparently not. Someone said I was a fool for upgrading the blowtorch. Just imagine how slow these parts would be with my crummy level 1-er. I'm pretty sure the cheapest warship is about $750. Now granted, I only have $14, but if I sell enough of my goodies, maybe we can make it a reality. Maybe. <laughs> There we go. Tell our main man to get some work done. And I'll finish off the rest of this. Can we not get rid of this, actually? You know, assuming I wasn't standing on it. Maybe it counts this as being attached to it. Farewell. I scrap the warship and then leak it to War Thunder forums. War Thunder. I actually played and enjoyed War Thunder quite a bit, but that was back when it was planes only. <laughs> People would get so arse blasted about ramming. And I would always say it takes two to ram. That didn't make them any happier, though. Looking pretty stripped down. <laughs> kind of in a bit of a hurry to see if I can get this done in sub 4 though. <laughs> but how can we not get things done in sub 4 when a single hammer swing can break so many rivets? Most navies scrap their own ships, while well, most navies clearly don't know about Super Bengali Man here. He's operating at a whole nother level. These parts here are not meant to be broken off. Because if they are, I'm going to have some problems. They don't have breakpoints, so I'd either need to use explosives or use explosives. I think that's the only option I'd have.
kind of looking forward to the next ship already. We've been working with just the skeleton for a wee while now. I miss going inside and trashing entire rooms and stealing TVs and all that. Hmm, these each need to be tonked. All right, let's get tonking. And grabbing. <laughs> Explosion as Megumi. Megumi. <laughs> I'm not familiar with that one. That's that wee lass with the uh, eye patch and leg bandages, right? I saw a mod that added her into Noeta. That game where you play as a Finnish witch. But I have not seen her show or read her books. Right, is that enough for you to be carted away? Well, I'll be! We're not done until we get the recycling done, but this is looking like it's going to be about a 3.53. I'm coming in and just watching you just chuck that much weight around. It's now registering how ridiculous it all is. Yeah, one single guy scrapping entire ships. But it doesn't have to be one single. This game has multiplayer. And I am sorely tempted to set up some kind of multiplayer event with this game. And I think it would be some kind of race. We could all... Oh, hang on. What's your story? <laughs> Making little teams with the goal to scrap... Uh, Scrap boats in a certain time. Could be a lot of interesting applications there. As long as we all start out with the same money. You'd have to decide, are you going to want to use explosives? They're expensive, but they might really shave some time off. Timer ain't stopped yet. We haven't recycled. Said we're nose to tailing this thing. That means we have to do the Bing Bing Wahoo minigame. Bengali DDR. Let's go. You know, there's someone who's left this stream running, has gone into another room, and is now being very much annoyed by this noise. Okay, game. I think we get the idea. Bloody hell. It skipped past that last part because the space to speed up the scrolling there is also space to speed past the uh, results screen, but it looks like we got something in the region of uh, 20,000 tons of metal, maybe more. It was mostly metal. The few things that weren't, I think, were just non metals rather than liquids and equipment. But now we can stop the timer. Yeah, there we go. The whole thing is done. Nothing remains. We have a whole load of materials, and we can eye up what we're going to get next. Alright, alright. There we go, nicely checked off as well. $109 dues. What do we have before? About 18 or so? Right, ooh, jings. So I wouldn't mind grabbing that Chevy. 
Although the resource value is significantly lower than the cost of the ship. These contracts are pretty great. Do you realize what this ship was transporting? Besides military items, I heard stolen valuables. I'm willing to pay you handsomely, but can I get my hands on the Chevy? 750 buckaroos. Let's see if we could sell off enough equipment for that. Namaste, my friend. Namaste. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, oh I think so. All right, sweet. I'm not selling that equipment. Look at these metals I can get rid of. $610 or so. Now it's going to have to be about $650 or so. All right, just sell off all that metal that I scrapped. And we can have our military ship. Can you rebuy the same ship multiple times and just scrap the same ship again and again and again? Yes, you can. Doesn't matter if it's done or not done, but we can take, say, the Mad Sea. And yes, I could buy that for $10. It's got about $200 worth of scrap. And I think you can do the contracts again. This check mark says that I've already done all the contracts, but they could be done again. Don't know why you don't get a check mark for the first one. I definitely did this first one. But yeah, by selling off all that scrap metal, uh, we can get rid of the timer now, can't we? Away you go. Insignificant. We'll get our, get our hands on the Chevy. But those who believe that I could get this done lightning fast, under 4 hours 30, yeah, easily, very easily. Choose outcome, get your payment, enjoy your points. Will we bring up the... The summary? Yeah, might as well have a quick look and see who gets the payments. Hold your horses there. Prediction outcome, come to me. Yeah, there we go. No huge points going around. It's not the weekly one shot after all, but big old geezer. Sounds like they're the name of a ship to be broken down. They believed in me the most. They get plenty of points coming in. All these people that thought I was going to be slow. Come on now. Think about who you're dealing with. Anyway, I want to get back to ship breaking. If we can afford the Chevy, we will have the Chevy. How quickly did you get through it? Uh, what was that? 3 hours 53? Not too shabby. All right. Consider that a once-off, though. I'm not going to be taking timed, uh, timed predictions on every ship. You can see what was dragged in here, though. That's kind of cool. Not only that, though, the, the physics for the truck work as well. It bounces over. It's been blown out here, making this seem like an ideal place to leave the truck. Maybe leave it about here so I could throw in from that inner point and from the deck. Old warships still carry many dangers. One of them's containers with radioactive materials. You're equipped with a Geiger counter to warn you of danger. Get rid of harmful materials and pave way for the crane. Really? Does that mean I can die? Hmm. But we've not been able to die so far. Inert. Right, first things first, just grab anything that's loose, <laughs> including <laughs> including the light fixtures, as were ob obviously left for us to have. Whoa, it's very spicy over there. <laughs> Let's do the clever thing and just peer in. Hmm, don't know what happens, but I don't want to risk killing myself in case you lose, well, everything by doing that. Oh, I can just take the portal. Cool. Now this is a level 1 ship, and we had our tools kitted out to be very effective on a level 2 ship. Meaning, we are... Oh, okay. Like that, please. 
We are going to be lightning fast at breaking most things on this ship, at least we should be. Oh yeah, including the, uh, this is nice. That's all I want my little blowtorch to be able to do. Get on with it, man. Maybe I should upgrade that crane. His slowness is starting to bother me. <laughs> Just punch the mines. Punch the keys, for God's sake. We do, and we're not at, not afforded any radiation protection. We'll never find a shipbreaker like me again, though. That's for sure. No way do those things only weigh five kilos. Not a chance. Bye bye. Would have thought we could pick that up, didn't look too heavy. Given the weight of the other thing, I'd say maybe five kilos. <laughs> Alright, remember the scrap on this vessel isn't even worth half the price we paid for it. So we need to get these contracts done. High, a uh, high alloy, file cabinets, modules, ammo box. It's all of vital importance. I need to take care of the spicy device in there though. Don't worry, I'm told that the the rads I'm being exposed to right now is about the equivalent of a chest x-ray. Mm. How am I going to deal with you? Oh well, we'll work with things that we can deal with first. Chernobyl chest extra. You're delusional. I haven't seen Chernobyl, but I've seen clips of it. Enough to make me think I'd probably enjoy it if I spent the time watching it. But I'm just so averse to watching telly. Or light fixtures? World War II light fixtures? <laughs> I wasn't such an amazing thrower. The people working here probably wouldn't tolerate me stealing all the light fixtures all the time. It was free copper. We'll just casually pick up 40 kilos of mounted gun turret as well. New Hoi 4 DLC adding Bangladesh focus tree and ship scrapping minigame because now everything's a minigame in that bloody game. I'm telling you, you're not satisfied with some aspects of Hoi 4 there. What a real shame. I want to play that game, it's just playing it much worse than thinking about playing it. <laughs> oh, 
Can I get in here without spiciness being a problem? Seems like we can. Gib. <laughs> Aside from one bugged element, we haven't needed to use explosives for anything so far. Although it says use explosives to destroy this door, I have a funny feeling that we won't have to. There we go. Why would I even destroy it? <laughs> I think I've just been underusing explosives, Marvin. I think if I used them more, we'd see the merits to them. Because they do very quickly destroy a reasonable amount of the parts. I don't know exactly how large an area of effect they have. They very easily blew through the bugged out part that we found in the previous ship. Ooh, little gun? You found a water gun. Minesweeper is a small warship. Da, 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 da. Okay, good for good for us. There are there is one collectible on every ship, I believe. with the exception of the very first tutorial ship. And I think there's an achievement for finding all of them. But who cares about getting 100% achievements? The answer is some people do. Not really me, though. We're getting rid of you? Not yet. That top part needs to go. Ooh, ooh easy now. I don't want to just unceremoniously drop myself on top of some spicy cargo. Great to see some liquids though. Liquids have been a bit of a problem for me so far. Surprising amount of upgrades require liquids. How do I get up there? There we go. This isn't exactly presenting unique and new challenges, but it is nice to have a different ambience of what we're tearing apart. Story. There's a little bit here that I didn't disconnect. Radiation's a good thing. A few more arms will speed this up. Mm. Man can dream. A couple more arms and I'd maybe fight in Mortal Kombat. Oh, mistakes were made. Thought I could get up there. <laughs> what is stopping this from being moved? Do I need to tonk that thing off? Oh, it's already in the queue. That makes my life easier. Thanking you. Should be able to get a good amount of wood off of this. I used wood extensively on this boat. That makes my life easier for upgrades down the line. 
Imagine, Jake, if you had another mouth and two more arms, you could command a crane and collect scrap at the same time. Well, we could practically have that if we had multiplayer. And I believe I erroneously said that the game only has two-player multiplayer. I think that it's not limited to two. I don't know what it is limited to. I did not pay that much attention. Someday I will. It feels like I'm playing that golden eye trade level. Natalia's chatting my ear off and I'm trying to zap our way out. How many things have we got in the queue now? Three things. A rather enjoyable ship to tear apart. Do not even begrudge buying the DLC, and I think it was very cheap as well. How much does it cost? Anybody get me a a price check on the DLC for the warships in this game? As I can even remember. The reviews were pretty poor, so I did hesitate. But the reviews tended to be things like, it's buggy, I can't 100% the ship because this part is inaccessible. And whilst I do want to 100% these ships, I had a feeling it wasn't going to be that bad. Ooh. Ooh. Gotta be careful, that's electrified. Ooh, <laughs> gotta be careful, that's electrified. Something to turn off in here. There it is. <laughs> it's seven to eight Norwegian kroner, says Hast. Yes. Are you the localizer that keeps explaining prices in Norwegian Kroner on my beloved Dogens? Anyway, hardly breaking the bank. Just take you off like that. Much easier. Take the nuclear approach. Not independent of the taste of coffee, I can't believe some people pay such prices to get their fix. This is going to be really rapid. Maybe I, sh maybe I should be keeping a counter for each uh, each boat I do. Not to have any bets on it, but... I don't know, it just seems like a fun thing to keep track of. But I missed doing it to begin with, so I'm not sure I'll do it now. People pay a lot of money to get alcohol. Easy now. 
That bottle of pen daring did cost me a, uh, what was it, 190 it came in at? Well, I say it cost me, I was willing to go to 100 quid, but some generous people around here helped out with that. During the less than generous system shop 2023 weekly one shot, which was very unpleasant. <laughs> I can claim a contract. But I'm more interested in claiming all of them. So I need a bunch of wood, gold, and acid. The wood we can get from the flooring. The acid and gold, no doubt, is going to come from a... Something we have to airlift out. Are you just part of the wall here? I think you are. Gotta be careful, I do not have the money for explosives. Explosives cost 50 Bengalese dollars each. They're 15, not 5. That's expensive. Kids have got to go hungry if I buy explosives. Less this throwing arm, it would be such a pain to have to get out all the time to deposit these goods. I wonder if that's something that came up in playtesting. Uh, play they realised how much, how bothersome it was to constantly walk over to a truck and put things in and they went, what if our guy could just throw? He could throw a nautical mile, an entire box of steel. And they tried it when mm, it's good. And it is good. There we go. Every hit a good one. Just like that, we've got a whole lot less ship at the front here. I'm assuming this is the front, I'm not good at telling which is the front and which is the back. I'd imagine that the front is the more pointy side. Yeah, like a knife. What in the world are you talking about, Sea Fusion? The image that immediately pops into my head is a guy stabbing people to death with a banana. What? <laughs> we all knew you were mad, but what? I have not seen Bollywood movies, no. I tend not to watch movies in general. About one a year does me fine. <laughs> Did I watch a movie this year? I think last year it was the 12 Tasks of Asterisk. Is that enough? No. There's more to be taken away from here. Swiftly depleting the amount of floor that I have here as well. Could be good or bad, but at least grinding through these takes not even half a second each.
I wonder if this will be a chain reaction. Mm. No, because they're still attached to the sides here. What a shame. Was that the original from the 60s? Uh, I'm not aware of it being remade. I well, found it highly enjoyable though. This is weirdly soothing, says Danny Oak. Nothing weird about it. We well, humans have been doing menial labor like this for millennia. It's ingrained into us to enjoy this. Or to enjoy finding ways to avoid it. Also, what is going on here? Electricity and rads. Well, that's not good at all for us. Although it's still unclear what exactly the penalty is for exposing ourselves to too many radians. <laughs> no. Well, down you all go. I got more of this shit to tear apart. I don't know why I'm fix uh, fixating on the back side here. I think if I needed upgrades for tearing apart this ship, I'd be more focused on getting the contract right now, but it's not a priority. There's no meaningful upgrade I could get right now. And there's also not really an upgrade, meaningful or otherwise, that I could afford right now. I have been overspending, and I already liquidated a lot of my goods just to be able to afford this ship. Gonna make it? Sick throw. Uh, other kind of sick throw. And this must be the detachment point for the hull. Lovely. Master Crane would come in at $200, and again, it's not really costing me anything to have the crane go slowly right now. If I could put that $200 towards, say, being able to carry five items at once instead of four, I'd far prefer that. Then again, seeing the crane go at double speed might be worth it just in itself, so I won't rule out the idea. Talkie man, we are not far off of dragging all of this away. Let's get to it. Let's 
wood is also good for the contract. In the end, we take all of everything, so I suppose it's not really a factor. And it will be for other ships than it was for the previous ship. Oh, this is kind of cool. I could actually just go around underneath and sabotage the whole floor. It wouldn't be a good idea to do that though, because I would undermine some things I want to crane out, like this. So let's not do that just yet. That is undermine literally and figuratively. That's right, Kai, so this is the second game. You could have had this instead of your pre-order for Dragon Dogma 2. Difference is, you'd be able to play this straight away. I hope you've written your Christmas thank you letter to your marble benefactor. Ooh, easy now, easy now. I don't want to break... Oh lord, oh lord! Whew. Never seen that before. I hope that wasn't vital and full of gold and acid. But the fact that it exploded tells me maybe it was. Hmm. Who knows, maybe it's all the gold that's radioactive, we'll find out. Certainly did a good job for accessing more of the ship. Okay, good, the radioactive stuff is still there. too cocky. The moment I saw that stuff to be airlifted out, I should have gingerly taken it from the top. But I was fairly convinced that the flooring was going to hold. Almost ready to come out. First time ever posting in chat, and it's to post that clip they get of the explosion. Stellar work. It's Tanner Tom Her. What a name. Crane, get to work. I'll have another piece for you momentarily. Right, so if we do try and go on this... Oh, well, I take it all back? You can fly! <laughs> Yay! This never happened before. I've tried this many times, and it tells you to get off of the equipment. I'm going to get recycled! Go back! You have ships to disassemble! Ooh, ooh, oh god. Aww. That'd be like the worst nightmare being caught in one of those. Especially legs first. At least if it was heads first, it would be over quickly. Oh. That's nightmare fuel getting stuck in one of those.
You don't need to switch for the hand tool at all. You can always pick up stuff with E and quickly throw with Q. A compelling argument, but here's my compelling counter argument. If you pick things up that way, there's this delay where it switches back to your tool, which is quite unpleasant. And you get this fraction of a second of unskippable pulling out the tool part. Which doesn't happen if you just keep your hands out. Then you just grab and grab and grab and grab. <laughs> Not really about the inefficiencies though, it's more about how unpleasant it feels. Sea Fusion is remembering the movie 2012. One of the characters gets unceremoniously meat grinded legs first. Doesn't sound very pleasant. Ew. Well, it's not meant to be. Right? Theme Park Venezuela game, all the rides are just repurposed industrial machines. And then for the porting to Brazil, just call it Theme Park VR and change nothing. Not even the Venezuelan flags. Alright, you good to go? No, but just because of this one piece here. Bake it away, toys. Boy, I sure hope there's some more gold for me to pick up around here, or else we are not 100%ing this. I'll have to live with that shame, because I'm not going to redo the whole boat just to get that one part. I ever get you? He said, Brazilian theme parks all have these short coasters and dinky Ferris wheels and bumper. Yes! Uh, it was the overwater theme park that I was doing in Roller Coaster Tycoon. And then I forget if it was you or Brelix or Orlov posted a picture of an aer aerial footage of a theme park in Brazil which just had that very coaster. Tiny, pathetic, goes up a tiny amount. Just curves round and down and that's it. Nothing to it. Looked very sad. Alright, jeez, what am I meant to do if I can't approach this thing? It's one of those shopping baskets to haul out here. Particularly keen on using explosives to destroy if I can avoid it. There's also more electricity flowing here. Off, by the way, please tell me you, you're made of gold and acid. You are made of neither. Hmm. Meaning it doesn't really matter if I destroy you then. Still like to avoid that though. I got this little bit of floor just to not have to deal with the stairs. That's 
a simple case of take care of the ceiling, and then we'll be able to lift this thing away, even though it doesn't have exactly what I need. It's still progress. Yep. Collapsing onto this doesn't matter at all. It's collapsing under that's of vital importance not to do. As we earlier discovered. Mm, yeah, getting up there. That'd be fine. Just dig up. Come on it, Chief. Hello. Wait, that is a problem? Sure, they'll slide right out. Ooh, gotta be careful about taking out the floor there. Hmm. Okay. does it. Oh, hello. Take that. There's an entire cooking set. No gold or acid in it, I believe, which is a tragedy. Ah, right. Okay, great. Now, before we do anything else, let's get you away. Because I feel like that floor is holding on by a thread. Two gone. Uh, that would have been a problem. That's just such a lovely sound that it makes. <laughs> Keep hearing this beeping noise. I assume that's electricity turned on somewhere. Something that I had a severely difficult time finding in a previous ship. the gold is suspended in aqua regia so you get the both the gold and the acid at one go. Could well be. I believe one of the other items that we needed to get in a previous ship had both gold and acid. And the real kicker is I think that contract's worth hundreds of dollars so to not get it would be a pain in the most painful places, the bank account. Thank <laughs> you. 
800? I think 800 is the big contract. Oh, the one that I'm looking at, yeah. Yeah, $800 would cover the cost of this ship. Because the materials on the ship don't cover the cost of the ship. I think the materials on the ship are only worth about $200. The ship cost me $750. I'm coming here to make a loss. But unless that radioactive thing is full of gold and acid, I'm going to be in hot water with a mysterious stranger. For the love of God, where's that beeping coming from? Also, how good is wood at insulating me from radiation? You ready to go? Almost. Interesting. We can suspend ourselves in the air by opening up the menu. Huh. That leads to further questions. <laughs> Such as, can you jump out of that and gain infinite air? <laughs> Comrade, you're delusional. <laughs> Take him to the infirmary. You're still not ready to go? Okay. Out of my way. Well, that bounces pretty well for a 52 kilo box. to suss out this radioactive doodah. We don't even know what it is. Well, I don't know what it is. Maybe you've sussed it out by now. Just criticism against the game. The music's kind of not really there. At least it's not annoyingly repetitive, but could they have tried even a little bit harder with the music? There you go. I just wanted to clean that out so I'd have an easier way to get to my truck. Whoosh. Yeah, there is day and night cycle. Uh, I had it on for one very short moment, but I didn't particularly like it, so I just turned it off. So 
what every day and night cycle option should have. An ability to disable it. <laughs> this game would be a lot better if it told you to go to bed at fixed intervals because it gets too dark to see. Well, we have a torch. But no, what we need is an annoying cat telling us to go to sleep because we're so tired. Hmm. Jeez, what are we to do if it's just so inhospitable in here? I mean, I could just try charging through it and seeing what happens. I suspect that is the cause. <laughs> Maybe I can be higher up above it. Ooh, easy. Let's not fall down into it. Tragic way to end your life. Hello. Get on, huh? <laughs> I would essentially want to go straight down from here. But how can I do that without jeopardizing my life? Maybe if I get rid of the stuff on top first. The way will become clearer. Concerning. <laughs> yeah, where's our hazmat suit? Fits you like a glove. The glove parts, at least. And the ceiling part as well. Doesn't matter if it falls on our head. We've either got a hard hat or a hard head. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, aren't CT scans something they recommend you don't get more than, like, two a year? I do not know much about radioactivity. I'm willing to trust professional advice on that. Bangladeshi man now has a life expectancy of about 13. And that's taking into account the fact that he's probably already 32. And been doing this job since he was 13.
I'm gonna find something out, like I needed to keep this verticality so I'd have some distance on the source of the radiation. Hey, you know, I could just dump my stuff in here. Whoosh. And it just looks like rubble in there. Grim. So I'll be chucking the gold in there now. Whoa! God, that spooked me. Didn't see that little electrified part there. A reasonable hint that perhaps the source of the electricity is in that direction. So is the source of some of our other woes. Can we take it from underneath? Nope. No, 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 we cannot, and probably should not. You love the Call of Duty blurry screen. <laughs> Due to damage mechanics, totally not outdated. Hmm. <laughs> Never been one for Call of Duty. But are we really taking damage? There's been no indicator of anything being able to kill us so far. Ordinarily, I'd run face first into the radiation just to get some information on what it does to me, but I'm scared stiff of it having some horrible consequences like now you're dead, the contract is forfeit, you're out of pocket 700 quid. I think it only takes you home, says Marvin, but don't take my word on it. I didn't intend to. <laughs> Glad we still got that immense throwing arm, though. Not just a great throwing arm, but such accuracy. So very able to make those calculations on where to throw. We've got more of the ship ready to be hauled away. I should have checked the contents of that thing I blew up. Now I'm left unsure if it had some vital components for me. At least if I knew if it had the gold and acid. And then I couldn't hold out this hope thinking that maybe the radioactive material is full of radioactive gold. At this point that's starting to feel like wishful thinking. <laughs> it said it was clear. <laughs> Maybe you should stop faffing around and just get the radioactive bit to find out. It's not going to get better. Ah, you are right. I 
I don't know, it might have an unexpected half-life. We just leave it be for a wee while, it becomes inert, fine to handle. Come on, show me the goodies. No, oh, no, they're just showing me the electrified nature. Sure, we're safe here. Oh, crikey, how do I deal with that? Maybe if I take off this side. Clearer. <laughs> yeah, I need to take care of the electricity, but I don't know where the switch box is, and I'm filled with confidence that it's right next to the um, the radioactive materials. I dread to think how it looks for you guys, the the fuzziness of the screen when I'm near that radioactive material. Probably not great. No, 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 the front yellow box was electrified. We can't touch that without getting shocked. There's a switch. You need to hit the switch before you destroy the yellow boxes. Or else touching the yellow box zaps you. Which does nothing, it just uh, freezes you in place for a moment, it doesn't actually hurt. I have tried to kill Benghazi Man with that, and I could not, he was unkillable. <laughs> Feels weird taking this from the top, oh, yeah that's what happens. A wee little electric tickle. I'm going to find that there was already a hole in the ceiling above what I need to extract. And if I'd just taken down this wall and craned it out, there wouldn't have been a problem. Honestly, if that's not the solution, I'm actually unsure how, they're, how this is meant to be handled. Close enough to scan it without doing myself in, surely. <laughs> What's holding this wall in place? Thank you. 
Hug the small radioactivity, build resistance to big radioactivity. Just carry a bit of plutonium in your pocket all day. It's like shooting myself with small caliber bullets to build up resistance to big bullet. Yeah, it feels like I was... It feels like this is a lot closer than I was able to get before. Oh, easy. Let's take care of the floor. I need that floor. Probably don't want to blow this thing up. Really, I just need to take care of the area above you. Then I can crane you out. Just do that. Oh, easy now. We get rid of all this electricity as well. It's been a royal pain in the bum. See this? If I z if I try and cut this, zoop. So we turn it off first, and then we can take it out. Hmm. Okay. Every so often, it stops taking my inputs for switching gear for some reason. No gold, no acid, no hope. Well, it all needs to be taken care of one way or the other, Marvin. But how in the world do I take care of that? Huh. Every approach seems so dangerous. Maybe you can get a lot closer than I'm giving it credit for. I mean, look, I'm practically on top of the thing. Maybe if I just get rid of this. And I'll also have to get rid of this. The stairs are probably blocking it. I don't like sawing downstairs, they have loads of different parts, so I usually just take care of whatever's underneath the stairs. Or there's otherwise attached to. There we go. All right, now to drink a gallon of uh, what is it, alkaline, and get all better. Also, really hope that that thing is full of gold and acid. Iodine. There we go. And it's too late. <laughs> no, you see, that'll absorb all the radioactivity out of my body and leave me feeling a-okay. I'm sure there's no lingering problems, so we'll just jump right in. Well, it had acid, but no gold, so I don't think we're getting that $800 contract today. Sad day.
Now what? Don't let us don't let it get us down. We'll still take care of the rest of the ship. Oh well, you know, maybe, maybe, say behind here there was another crate. One full of gold and acid. Another crate? Full of... Mm, oh, kerosene, paper, wood. Ah. Oh, no, that's also not... Not fitting the bill. to get out here if I don't tear all this apart, so tear it apart we shall. I do like his grunting whenever you jump, it does remind me of old FPSs. Somebody mentioned, I think, Serious Sam. To me, it puts me more in mind of Turok Dinosaur Hunter. Which is fine in all, but Rage Wars is pretty good. Rage Wars is where it's at. I think that did have a PC release, but it hasn't been remastered or anything. It's probably, probably a pain in the bum to run today. <laughs> Oh no, no, I played tons of multiplayer Halo back when I was a kid, TBW. I did not have an Xbox, but many of my friends did. Two TVs back to back, two Xboxes plugged in with a LAN cable. Four on four, blood gulch all day every day. It was great fun. Figure out how to warthog jump as well. I have fond memories of that. <laughs> right, you're surely almost ready to go if I just take care of the last of these parts. And again, good thing something landing on an item is not enough to destroy it. I feel genuinely bad about failing on the other part, though. 800 Bengali dollars, that's a lot of money. <laughs> You're probably blocking things as well.
Now you can get out of here. Don't you head on me. I got away from Sweden. Ultimately, I'm going to have made a loss on this ship, then. Surely not, but I won't have made much of a profit, that's for sure. Oh, there was a more plus one, but I suspect it was not uh, gold or acid, because it didn't show up in my contract there. Where's the elusive pile of gold that's just being hidden underneath some of this stuff? What happened to the tuna ship? We completely destroyed it. 100%. And I suppose this thing will be 100% destroyed, it's just that one of the contracts won't be fulfilled because they didn't... They didn't get the matter in the state that they desired. Bangladeshi fact. Apparently, the official name is the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Didn't know that. Also, the currency is the Taka. Hmm. The Taka. And just how powerful is this Taka currency? How many do I need to buy a Big Mac? this needs to go before I can pick it all up. Not much more. Not much more at all. Glad that radiation just clears away in no time. And like Nick says, it's cleared out of our body in no time as well, because we weren't eating it. Actually, thinking about it, if there's nothing else to really worry about, perhaps the right thing to do is to walkie-talkie you away, which you apparently won't do because of this. Hmm. They take care of it. You are bossy as you are. Right? <laughs> now, get rid of this. I will undermine the whole place. I don't think it'll work the way I want it to because this has too many connections on the side. But hey, I can try. severe difficulty reaching that part right there. It's so narrow. There we go. Is 
systematically does it. Your shopping cart even had the rest of the acid in it, Jake. It was just the gold. What a sh- yeah, what a shame indeed. Mm, yeah, as expected, it's too connected on the side for that to have truly destroyed everything. Oh well, we just have to do $800 worth of overtime. Make it all back. It's not a complete loss after all. We do get to keep 120... Uh, kilos of that acid as liquids for ourselves. <laughs> liquid tends to be what we're shortest on in terms of upgrade materials. Never dream of selling my liquids. Don't know what they go for, but seems like a fool's errand to sell. But it might mean affording the next ship is going to be a little tricky. to nose to tail this ship. Need every scrap I can get to pay off my debts. aspect of this ship does make some of this rather off. Tons of framework on it as well. 15 tons of iron is worth like a hundred dollars. Uh, in this game, didn't I sell 20 tons of iron for quite a few dollars? I think one kilo of metal, and it all just gets extracted away as metal once you combine them all and finish the job, is worth two cents. So, 50 kilos is going to get us a dollar. I have some not unreasonable amount of money and materials. <laughs> A rare whiff from our cannon arm. Of course, we've got 15 tons in the truck right now, and it's a safe bet that almost all of that is metal. That was on me though. You need to hold still when you launch these things, otherwise it will change. Twelve kilos of gold is currently seven hundred and twenty thousand euros. Ooh! If you're just going to say seven hundred twenty euros, I think, well, that's very cheap, is it not? Could buy that up and make gold things out of it. Sell those on for big bucks. 
But no, I, I don't have a spare 720,000 euros to invest in gold at the moment. I could maybe squeeze you out 720,000 warrant for it. And that seems like a steal. Good old Hungarian toilet tissue money always makes me feel like such a rich man whenever I go shopping. Yes, I'll have these cuts of meat, please. That'll be thousands upon thousands of forints, sir. Oh, not a problem. I'm so money. I'm paying my rent as well, holy moly. What's my rent again? 200,000? 250,000? Seems like a lot of money, right? Man, if going to a place where the currency was low value makes you feel good, try and visit Argentina, Jake. You'll feel like a trillionaire. Yeah, but I'll also be in Argentina. Years of exposure to BRs have taught me that few fates are worse. Yeah, Marvin's right, it wasn't undermining the the gold load, it was hacking open a gas pipe. Moments before the big explosion we saw fire looming out. And hey, you know, it very swiftly destroyed a whole bunch of the site for me, I guess that's kind of good. I wonder if this would be better doing from above rather than below. How much less of this poor ship will be done in no time, and then it's onwards to, well, whatever we can afford with two dollars. <laughs> Even if you somehow end up dead broke and needing to afford another ship, you will always have the tutorial ship available. And it is completely free, and it has a contract worth ten dollars. <laughs> starting to think that you would be far better positioned. Over here. His current average salary is 312,000 taka a year, which roughly equates to 3,000 US dollars. You really are a wealthy Bangladeshi man. Hmm. Yeah, we're getting all this uh, all this money earned in no time. But you know, just about every game that simulates working is going to make you a rich man pretty quickly. How many games can you think of where you generate money and it's really not a lot of money? <laughs> Even if we weren't living in Bangladesh here, our man here is able to generate some pretty enviable amount of cash quite quickly. Sure, it's for back-breaking labor, but it doesn't take very long. If I'd actually managed to get my contracts done, this would be uh, like $2,000 made in a couple of hours. As it stands, it's only going to be about a thousand dollars. Oh, but I also had to pay for the ship. Hmm. Hmm, yeah, actually, the profit margins look worse the more you look into them for this ship. Any gacha game after two hours of play? <laughs> yeah, but in my head, those games are developed for and played by the mentally ill, so all bets are off there.
Pay for the ship? Wow, yeah. Need that seed money. We're our own man here. That means we have to assume a certain amount of fiscal viability for our own organization. Oh, nice, nice. It's a whole lot of flamethrowing that I didn't want to do. Come on, where, where's the secret hidden gold vein inside all of these? Just 12 kilos of gold, could we just paint or gold plate? Some of this gold? Some of this metal? Oh yeah, these, these trucks can hold a whole lot. I'm pretty sure it's infinite. Acronymous claimed 50 tons on their truck, and it was still going. Metric ton, of course, which is T-O-N-N-E-S. Alright, is this going to magically fly, or is it all going to fall? Magical flying it is. Must be a lot of heavy air in here. Ah, huh. uh, this could pose a problem. Hmm. Gonna take the ladder up around the side. <laughs> the radioactive tricks. There we go. The breaking rules of physics. Acro says, just encountered the flying via ladder glitch. It's cool, isn't it? He just goes as high as you want to get a good view. When I first did it, it reminded me of doing the flying bug in Resident Evil 4. Which is pretty fun. This whole ship is just about ready to go, and it feels very satisfying to finish off a whole ship. Some of the contracts are for part of a ship, especially the very beginning ones. And that's cool and all, but at the end of the day, it feels like you're just tearing down someone's condo. I want to tear apart a whole ship. And I don't need to destroy that. At least not specifically that. Mm, now I'm not so sure. Yeah, it looks pretty strapped in there. What a shame. Show that bug for the newcomers. Ooh, I don't know. Oh, it 
these health restores? I guess you need to keep the heat applied. I haven't been able to do this successfully on stream yet. But basically, you just it, it's as simple as just climbing up a ladder. But every now and then, you just continue to be in the ladder climbing animation. And then you just climb, climb, climb away. You can't grab it in midair or anything fancy like that, it's just... I'm gonna try it three more times, if I don't get it, you're out of luck. I think you know what's happening because you have more free motion of your character. Maybe you need a certain tool equipped for it. Yeah, not happening. If I figure out how to get it done on command, then I'll certainly do it on stream. But I've only done it accidentally so far. Is this game from the same guys that made the Spaceship Breaker game? No, you can tell by the lack of communism. And indeed, the lack of talking in general. Right. What's blocking you? Aha. I should have started taking these away ages ago. Now the slowness of the crane is actually going to have an effect. Are you made of gold? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Alright, while well, Wally slowly cranes that away. We can say huzzah to a job well done. Actually, I'm sure everybody wants to know, but can we train away the truck? Seems like a silly thing to do when the truck is full of 18 tons of our hard-earned metals. And non-metals. Uh, sort the excess first. Time for the best part of the game, the sorting minigame. I disagree. Miss those. And we can see by the shadow that the crane is actually operating in the background. I like that. I don't think there's actually any penalty for messing up. Because you have the option just to redo the ones that you missed. Making this minigame even more pointless. I still get a massive combo bonus. We say we missed one, and then we just hit sort again. Dunk done. Perfect sort. It's got to be the most out-of-place minigame I've had in the game. Right, we can at least confirm the two contracts that we... that we did not mess up. Here you go, John Fran for 320 buckaroos and Paji Khan for 400. So that pretty much pays off the ship. We don't get the big dollar do. But that does mean that we can liquidate the other resources. With impunity. Let's 
sort it all. Oh no, it's too fast! Ah. <laughs> okay, I just messed that up so I can sort again for- Oh, no combo money bonus. Maybe there is a downside to messing up. Oh no, it still gives me it for perfect sourcing at the end. Okay, well, never mind then. Where's the wood economy? The woods count as non-metals, and that is, a, uh, is an economy. Whilst it's busy craning away the last of the ship, and I do think we have to recycle that, let us consider our next ship. It's not going to be the $1,715 multi wudgty that's for sure. What options do we have? We have got the Snopkowicz, the Slippery Herring, the Chilling Turtle, the Maroon Lagoon, the Mariner. Could I squeeze out the Heavy Mermaid? Apparently we can still hear it singing. It's full of liquids. I'm not sure I've got the the spare cash money for the Heavy Mermaid. The $300 ship is a nice one, the Mariner. Mm, some alright contracts. I won't take much of your time to get to the point the ship you bought may look like junk, but it contains valuable resources. Mm. So yeah, if only we didn't lose $800. Well, we'll have to make it all back. Yeah, I think we'll think we'll trust you on the Mariner then. I'll have to ensure that everything here's gotten rid of. That's the last part of it going in, down into the warehouse, which uh, now I'm not entirely sure that we have to mini game the warehouse stuff, but surely we do. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there in the bottom left instead of the top left. I finally find out how much dosh we even have. Oh, is it not immediately clear? You know, I think you make more money by bringing in a larger amount. Maybe it is good to pile up as much as you can. Hmm. Tons of metal, so let's sell off a bunch of it. Fine, I'll buy the game and chill out to it myself, since this is Rage Machine. Might help you with all that rage. Alright, let's do it. The Mariner is mine. Scrap the old ship. It's a problem. There's a kick in the bum that I didn't get to 100% it, though. How long do we spend on that ship? An hour? An hour and a half? I think you only get the check mark on it if you do all three contracts, so I would have to pretty much do it again. But I wouldn't have to 100% every scrap of the ship, right? Okay, Mariner, let's get it done. Scrap the old ship, but we are the scrapper. Yes, scrap seems like a, a poor term to use for this. Maybe something like abandon, or if it's all scrapped away... Finish up, clear up, just not scrap. Scrapping's what we do do. Alright, keep the flatbed here. And the first order of business is to always steal the lighting fixtures. They must think they're helping us out so much by giving us these lights to work with. But no, we just steal them. Grind them down for their copper. Looks like this is a lot of different parts. So we'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh part probably is one large part at the back. Easy money. Are we going to ladder glitch? We are not. Okay. Plenty of liquid goodies to be had here. Now you see these goodies, now you don't. 
And let's make sure that our crane guy is actually working hard. Not working at all. There is likely nothing inside this crate. Now let's keep our crane operator honest. No, it's just steel, iron, and copper. We need copper for the Amea contract. Iron acid, there's that gold again. Hmm, seems there's a lot of stuff we need for this. Anyway, take it away. What's this thing, anyway? Is it something to crane or something I can just take? Trainable. What do I do with you then? Ah, this is an attachment. This is a foolish idea though, I don't have space to hold on to this and I think my vehicle is too far away. <laughs> ah, easy money. It's very light. Well, thing's only 16 kilos. Looking for more light fixtures on the ground. Looks like we've got them all. Next course of action is to gather everything that's loose up top and inside. I can just pick this up. Thought it was a lever, but maybe it was a mop. I've often wondered. Okay, this is just plastic trash. I thought it might have counted as liquids. The real question is, what do these scraps of paper count as? Just paper trash, one kilo of. That's going to go down as non-metals. Which are always in demand for upgrades. I haven't done any upgrading so far today, because... Um, by the end of last stream, we upgraded almost all of our tools to be as good as they need to be to handle level 2 ships with ease. And we don't have the budget to move over to level 3 ships, so that's good for us for now. Tonk. First aid kit, toilet, sink. It's all going away. And good, because first aid kits are needed for the Gurav contract. Use explosives to destroy it all. Be the judge of that. I know I said I'm picking up loose items, but if it bars my way, it's gotta be good. This is all very compartmentalized. Hmm. What's behind this wall? Uh, I guess I will. Didn't want to melt through this, but the longer I spent thinking about it, the better off I would have been just doing it. Hello? Paying dividends already? What have we here? Go to Hoover Hoses. Stuff that looks like trash, but I'm sure to the average man. This is a treasure trove. Well, the average Bangladeshi man. Jings, we've already got loads of that low alloy steel. I remember when grabbing a ton of low alloy steel was uh, quite a bit of an undertaking for us now. 
Now we think nothing of it. Don't. I guess a considerable part of that came from the big box that we craned away, but not all of it. Hello, hello. Copper, aluminium. No gold though, but the copper is still needed for the Amea contract. Becoming quite inconvenient to go back and forth the truck, but the way I see it, we just get this kind of stuff out of the way. We never need to worry about picking up loose items again. <laughs> Including just this loose giant gas cylinder. We use that in Resident Evil 4 to take out the right hand man, right? Your right hand comes off. <laughs> Themes complete, aside from that of course. I don't know how much is above there, and I'm not going to take the ceiling out, just in case there's something else resting on top of it. I'm less convinced that I like using these. Especially since if I put my goods into them, they don't count towards the contract until I airlift it out. And depending on where the little shopping basket is left, it can be a royal pain to crane away, because you need to clear the roof above it. Or the several roofs above it, depending on the location. <laughs> the baskets are really nice quality of life. I don't know. They don't hold that much. And like I said, the, the interaction with the contracts and the pain to actually lift them out. I don't see the utility. At least not yet. Perhaps in time. I will see the merits. Ooh, gimme, gimme, gimme. Everyone needs fire alarms. There's our gold, or at least there's 15 kilos of our gold. And we can also disable the electricity, not blow the place up again. We've learned our lesson from last time. I haven't learned my lesson about swiping all of the lights, though. Lights are copper, and remember, copper is one of our goals here. Nice. They hold around two tons, I think. Yeah, but the, the truck holds arbitrary tons, and I like those tons. Use explosives to destroy. It's actually kind of strange that the game doesn't actually seem to necessitate explosives at all, unless there's a bug. Two ships ago, maybe three by now, we encountered a part that we could not destroy because it had inaccessible... Uh, well, the rivets just weren't there, and the little joints that needed to be saw bladed off were inaccessible. So we just had to blow it up. Cost me $15 to blow it up. I wasn't best pleased with that. Now, you know what? I wonder if I could just take out the wall. Yeah, there we go. The wall has to go anyway. Might as well take them all out. You could afford a single Siggy. Well, hope not. This does not seem like a safe job to be smoking in. Well, what would be? Cigarette smoke is absolutely vile. I do not consort with smokers. Well, not while they're smoking, at least many of my good friends do smoke, but most of them at least know not to do it around me. I will kick their ass. Kicked one of our housemates out of the house once for smoking. It was raining outside as well. He wasn't best pleased with me, but uh, I don't care. I wasn't best pleased with him. <laughs> right. That's the inside dealt with. At least the loose items. Now we go topside. 
Why not smoke? Your character's already more cancer than human after the last job. Might as well. That might have been that uh, good kind of radiation. I just tuned in. What was the final time for breaking the ship? Three hours and 53-ish minutes, I think. Well under four hours. Yet again, people underestimated me. <laughs> yeah, radiation's how we got the cannon arm. How could we turn our back on it? Maybe it's from our mother thinking that a glass of wine a day is surely the right amount when you're pregnant. Alright, more, more alloyed steel, but I need to find another first aid kit. This stuff isn't exactly loose, but it's loose enough. I just want to have a nice flat topside area. Make it easier to move around or punch specific holes if I need to make them to crane out certain items. And the whole craning mechanic was genius on this, because otherwise you just destroy everything and pick up the pieces. Hello. The idea that you need to do some targeted destruction to extract certain parts before going ham is great. Again, it's a lot like Hard Space Shipbreaker. Where you get the big dollar dues for extracting, say, the reactor, and then you can just mindlessly smash apart the rest of the ship. Oh, the gameplay in that game was so good and so tainted. I do still think the game is worth playing, and I I would recommend it for that. And who knows, maybe if you're an armchair communist, you're going to love the heavy-handed storytelling. Maybe there's few things you love more than not being able to play your game whilst somebody rants and raves at you and forcibly signs you up for the very uh, overtly banned in-game union. Alright, do I want to bring this whole thing down? Not yet. I'm going to climb it first. For two main reasons. Oh my, look at all this other stuff. Oh, you're coming with me. Rags and seats and... What the hell is that? Is it electrified? Evidently not. What did I just cut? Oh, was that a gas main? Oh, not again! Oh, no! Oh, I bet that had good stuff inside it as well. Who leaves a little gas main just in the floor like that? Did that take out all the gold? Possibly. Certainly took out something. Hmm. Part of me is wondering if I should just restart the ship. Because I would like to 100% it. Yeah, I'll, I'll restart the ship, but I think I'll finish off the wood, the copper, and the first aid kit so I can at least get my money back. That way I shouldn't be really out of pocket. Mistake to make a oh, wow, big part. 
right here. It just blew clean up. Okay, that being the case, I will drive you around the other side. Should be more accessible to throw my junk in there. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was an electrified bit. I did not stop to consider there might have been dangerous stuff flying through it. There's those gases. Right, find myself a first aid kit. The copper and the wood. Well, there's the copper right there. Ah, where am I going to find 500 kilos of wood in short notice? Especially since I might have, you know, blown it up. Got gold in you, but I don't think I get the monitors, the fans, the other gold in due time for that. What are you made of? A lot of gold in you. These two things together actually get the gold contract. So unless I blew up a monitor or a fan, I think I could actually get the whole contract done. But I'm still going to start afresh. Just want to. Just want to grab that first aid kit, wherever it could be. Ah, there you are. And then grab some wood. Right, folks, where do you think we got some wood? <laughs> this bed is surely made of wood. You're made of wood. This room is made of wood. This door is made of wood. Picture frame, probably made of wood. <laughs> right, come on, wooden structure. Let's have that. Oh, come with me. This is the difference between profit and loss, so you better believe I'm having this wood. I absolutely miss having sham this wood. <laughs> and look at that, most of the way there already. This is probably what is uh, efficient play, really. Fast track getting the contracts and get the money, but oh, where's the fun playing like that? I want to completely nose to tail these things, preferably without blowing up half of it. <laughs> Just a little bit more wood needed. Anybody <laughs> spotted some more wood? Oh, well, there's that dart board. But there's also a whole upper level. So how do we get there? With rope. Oh, now it tells me about the pipe hazard. You can find gas tanks on ships destroying them while the gas uh, before the gas is turned off will result in an explosion. Very cool. Thank you, game. I should upgrade this rope. Get some better length on it. Wet. Oh, you're made of wood. in these things? No. Bridge, bridge modules and bits and bobs. I'll take them anyway. That's why you explore ships. I was exploring the ship. It's just that thing caught my eye and I thought I must cut this. I mean, who leaves a gas main here? Right in the floor. Where was it? I think it's gone now. This is the wrong room, but yeah. People could just trip over that. This is the ladder I've had the most luck in triggering the forever climbing glitch. 
Like that. We just claim our way away from our responsibilities. Isn't Bangladesh beautiful? Chings, they built all that shanty town, but there's nothing to do with it. I wonder if they intended to treat it like the first game where you could actually go around and conscript workers to pick out crap for you. Because this looks like a whole lot of area to have built, but you're confined to this tiny area here. It's the shanty town made of wood. Looks like it. Alright, I hope you've got vertigo, because that's going to make this a whole lot more fun for you. We Clunk. Splat. Vertigo feels great. Right, what was I actually trying to do? Uh, I was curious if there were any collectibles around here. If I were a collectible, I'd be hidden up in the top of one of these things to punish someone for cutting them down too quickly. Although I've already been punished for cutting things down too quickly. A little bit of wood. I know we saw some wood. Where was it? There, you're made of wood. Ah, these tables and chairs and things, they'll be made of wood. Yeah, eight kilos of wood right on you. Come to me. I think I picked up a safe there as well. <laughs> that was a... What? How did that land? Oh, well, don't question it. Just enjoy it. More goodies. Liquids especially are nice. If you were a collectible, you'd have exploded, Jake. Yeah. <laughs> I've learnt my lesson, probably. Think before you cut through exposed gas mains. Now I know I've got the contract, but the urge to just swipe everything is overwhelming. I need to just stop. <laughs> Go back, claim rewards, get out of here. It'll still be a net positive for me, but not a very big positive. Alright, I do not put you in for recycling just yet. We need to claim our rewards first. Two hundred and forty, five hundred and forty, and the ship only costs three hundred. It's good. Don't scrap it just yet, though, because scrapping a ship also removes all the goods from your warehouse and your truck. So get the recycling done first. And since we have never used it before, let's try the auto sort. you don't get paid for it. Well, that's even worse. Okay, I'm never auto-sorting again. You lose 10% of your goods and you get less with, uh, you get not paid for it. Unthinkable. Alright, scrap it up. Hey, the game did recommend to use explosives and I did. Alright, there we go. We're outsourcing that ship to others, but we don't get paid for it. And now... Let's try it again. There we go. Not a whole lot of lost time, and I suppose we made a little bit off of it, but... Such a tarnishing failure. The contract's come back, though. So like I said, you could probably very quickly 
if you, if you wanted to speed run the game, I guess. Very quickly find easy to do contracts. Get it done, refresh the ship, do it again, as long as it's profitable. Steal that, it's much needed copper. It's mad that we even waste our time picking up the scrap paper off the floor. It's also kind of mad that it clocks in at one kilo. Who finds one kilo of cardboard on the ground? Maybe it's the same kind of cardboard that we're using in the long dark. The one that takes half an hour to tear apart. For our poor delicate Canadian hands. <laughs> I wonder if there's a DLC or a mod where you get to scrap the Black Sea Fleet. There is only one DLC for this game, and we already played through one of the three ships that it adds, and that's the Warships DLC. At least I think that's the case. Don't we have the power to check this if we went to... still don't know why it doesn't give you a store page button here. It really doesn't, does it? Anyway, Discussions gives me a link to store page. Uh, you know, once upon a time there was money here. Then Frozen Kaiser decided that he wanted a copy of Dragon's Dogma 2 ahead of time. Right. Yeah, the only DLC is the Warships DLC. But it's not too shabby. And it's hardly breaking the bank, and the game itself barely breaks the bank. Since you mentioned liking ruins, Jake. The capital of the Bengal Sultanate, Goar, is one big ruined stone city. The capital, huh? Do they let you just roam around in there? Because I really like to be unattended when I'm exploring my ruins. I need to be able to climb up and around the place with reckless abandon or else I don't get my jollies. What happened with the last ship? Well, so far, so far every ship we've had, we've completely scrapped. Before this, we did a warship, and although we uh, we blew up a pile of gold and were not able to fulfill one of the contracts because of that, we still scrapped 100% of the ship. And this ship we quickly redid because I accidentally sawed through a gas main, and that was done earlier early on enough that I just grabbed a couple of contracts and then got a fresh ship of the same kind. for perfection. Maybe start by looking for the gas valve. No, I want to I clear out these flat parts first. Makes me feel like I've got a nice empty canvas to work with when I don't have these getting in the way. It also stops obscuring the throw over to the truck quite so much. Such impressive, very impressive suspension. Whatever you say, buddy. Okay, right. With this part flattened out, maybe, just maybe, finding that gas valve is a good idea. Let's cut through some more yellow circles first, though.
Hello, hello. Close the valve. Just let that, just breathe in that gas. I wouldn't want that to go to waste. And now, surely, I can just cut through all this, right? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh no, it's fine. See? Just letting out the little bits of gas that were still in there. Yeah, harmless. Harmless. We just. Ooh, we found a space marine. Did, uh, did Games Workshop agree with this? Because they are extremely litigious about their IP. Yeah, just burning out the last of the gas. No big deal. Conk. That was scary, though. Okay, look at all these places that were probably blown up by my reckless cutting. Now we can have it all. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure if that was legally distinct space marine. It was something like the shoulder pads? Games Workshop trademarked the shoulder pads? I don't know. I mean, I don't really care. I'm not into Warhammer whatsoever. I played it as a kid, but that was more... Uh, matter-of-factly, since my eldest brother worked for Games Workshop. He was keen to make sure that... <laughs> Both of his brothers enjoyed the game as well. I think it was a rather disillusioning job for him, though. He could he could see just how much they were a shower of bastards over there. Come on down. that thing were made of paper mache, I would not be able to lob it that far. I don't have cannon arm like Bangladeshi man here does. Breaking it down like that actually removes any of the pieces. Feels like there was more bulk to it prior to the cutting. But it hardly matters, none of it is contractual parts, and if it's just a wee if it's just a wee bit of unimportant metals, I'm not gonna be crying over it. But blowing up a significant portion of the ship is not something I was willing to tolerate. At least not at the start. Maybe if we were an hour into the ship, and I was obviously still able to do the rest of the contracts, I might have just let the explosion be. I once posted a Stellaris after action report with Hive Mound Devouring Swarm Race. It got removed a week later. Removed? Removed by who? Paradox? 
They didn't want to tangle with the Games Workshop lawyers, so I don't blame them. Like I said, a litigious bunch. Oh, you called the race the Tyranids. This seems awfully strange that that would be a problem for an after-action report. Paradox are no stranger to having the... Oh, what was that beloved book and show? Game of Thrones. No stranger to having Game of Thrones breathing down their throats due to the mods for Crusader Kings, but in the end, they can go and choke on one because modded content is not their problem. Alright, looking nice and empty-ish. At least it will be once I take this down. Oh, give me that wood. We all know we need a ton of wood here. Seems odd that taking out the frame there allows me to blast down the door in the center, where surely... Surely it's this part that we need to be taken out to release that door. Oh yeah, give the give the paradox forum mods a bit of a break. I don't have to deal with Balkan nationalists every day, but they do. <laughs> and then again, I live considerably closer to the proud Serbians these days. Maybe I can't quite be as cocky about it as I was when I lived in Sweden. The Balkan nationalists are now a very real and very credible threat. Freaking proud Serb. Right. And the stairway might look good, but I don't want it to be here. Boy, it's seeming awfully attached, isn't it? Too attached to live. What blazes are you attached to? Perhaps this, actually. I'm even doing this. Just take care of the floor. Hmm. Still there, huh? By now, I could have just taken out the stairwell and it would have been faster, but that would be like admitting defeat. That's one thing I'll never admit here. I think it's the floor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Running out of things to think that it is. At this point, I'm just rather hard-headed in trying to take out the stairs without destroying the stairs. And I'm very unsure at this point what they're still attached to. Living, it seems. There we go. The side wall, of course.
Right, back down to do the inside. We did it once before, but now we get all the joys of doing it again. I like this routine. Take down one wall, take down other wall, take down door, take down door frame. Job well done, now we can easily pass through. And it's as if there was never a wall there to begin with. Okay, so this is just a broom. A broom that is once again just standing up on its own two feet. Well, it's mine now. I can actually do with another broom. I broke mine uh, the other week. I just wanted a cheap old broom to sweep up the leaves around here with. And well, you cheap out, you end up with a broken handle. How do you break a broom? Sweeping too hard, evidently. <laughs> the mighty weight of all those leaves that I'm sweeping up proved too much for the uh, flimsy, thin metal handle. And that thing just snapped. Should have got one with a wooden handle. More fool me. Actually, I think they sell just the, the sticks in the shop. I might just go and grab one. Paying for it, obviously. Right, come on. Let's make our way through. Now, without gas to worry about. And soon without electricity to worry about. We need only crane out the parts we need to extract. And then we're a shoe in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good old wood. Actually, I wonder if I could plug in my bow staff. Many, many years ago, a kind viewer got the address to Paradox Offices and sent me a bow staff. Very cool. Not something I can really put to much use. But uh, I got it after an inspirational run of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. Maybe I could plug it into my, uh, my broom and sweep about as well as Donatello does. <laughs> bow staff. No W. Bow. B-O. Like body odor. That guy is the strongest turtle in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He has unbelievable reach. He can hit enemies through ceilings and doors and floors. He, he doesn't care. I've also never beaten that game. It's so hard. Not only is the game so hard, I really wanted to watch an impressive run of it, so I put it up as a mod challenge. And Lizard destroyed that game. It was an amazing run to see. Guy, I feel sorry for anyone who missed that run because they will forever miss it. The VOD was not saved. Normally I make a point to save the mod runs, but in that case I had actually forgotten to request that it be recorded. There's a setting which is off by default on Twitch to save the VODs, the videos on demand for your runs. And I think that was Lizard's just first and only stream, so I turned it on, the VODs were off, and it's been lost to time, but I remember the run, and it was great. I, and except it wasn't Lizard, because I keep forgetting who ran Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Who the heck did it, and why do I keep forgetting them? I feel bad about it. <laughs> I don't like feeling bad. Right, how did we get through to here again? Did we just take the side route? Feels like there's a lot more electricity here than there was before. It was rusty, rusty on Twitch. Now they definitely don't do a lot of streaming. Right, off we go. No hazards, this is a no hazard zone.
I know I could use that little shopping cart thing, but I shall not. <laughs> All right, next up is a bit of wooden plastic. And by that I mean just wood, because we just chucked away the plastic there. Uh, actually, if we're going to open a route in, let's open a more direct route. I'll probably use it a couple of times for taking out items. Tonk, 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 bang. Not done yet. Easy peasy. Still all that beeping though. Or am I having a stroke? Funny, when I first saw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it was with German dub on pirated VHS. <laughs> Had a really cool opening theme song, probably best I've heard several years later. It was aired officially on TV with the English dub. I was disappointed by the opening theme in English. It was crap in comparison. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I forget if it's ninja or... Uh, hero. It changed between... English and American. Good old localization changes. Thankfully not as frequent today as they once were. I take down all the walls and take out all of this electrical wiring. Who knows, it might be some good golden wiring. I should be a little careful about just tearing down walls willy-nilly. They could be structural support walls, but I'm only taking out one side of the wall, which will surely be okay. If the ceiling collapses in on me, I will know that it was not okay. amount here. Causing a lot more back and forth thing than I'd like. <laughs> so I do need this gold, the steel, this copper as a matter of priority. I think I can just go straight up without any problems, but what I know is that I'm not going to take that risk. Come on, come to me. There we go. Going to be a tad stuck here. Let's just take care of the problem. Uh, actually, could I take care of the problem like this? Yeah. Thank you, rope. I need a way topside. And I need to steal even more of the set lighting. Yeah, I can almost certainly just take that out and then extract the gold. And I want to extract the gold. Where's the gold? I wonder if I could just... Yeah, let's just tear through this whole part right here. Spiral it at like uh, Junji Ito. Oh, there are spirals in my ears! A terrifying manga that was. It was brilliant. Interesting. This part needs to go as well. Hmm. 
Now this junk I'll happily put in my little shopping basket. Just some unremarkable metals. Does the hammer have AOE? No, it does not. Those sets of four rivets are just one single set. Bang. Normally we would have had to hit that several times, because the rivets, like many things you have to destroy, have a health bar. But the Bangladeshi man has become too powerful for health bars. We're able to hammer down things in one go. At least on this class of ship, if we go one class higher, we're going to need a fresh set of upgrades if we ever want to be that powerful feeling again. Hello, indeed. Pick that up. <laughs> no Age of Empires. A real shame. Lumen RTSs. <laughs> oh, don't take that away just yet. I need to. I need to leave. Yeah, see, normally, if you're in the way, it stops them dead. But for whatever reason, that doesn't apply when we pulled up that part from the warship. So I can only assume that it is some kind of flag they added only for these vanilla ships and forgot to add in the DLC ships. Needs further investigation. We'll try and ride something into the sky when we do another one of the warships. And if our fiscal situation is quite good, the ship that we do after this will likely be the Tier 2 warship. We did the Tier 1 one. And now we thirst for more. You know, it would actually probably be a good idea to take away the back side here. It's not that big, and it would open up an opportunity to throw a lot of this over to my truck here. So that's going to be our first focus, is completely removing this backside. Doesn't seem to be anything in the way. Well, I can tell, at least. No gas mains to blow up this time, or so I hope. the hiss, then we see the flame, then we realize the mistake that we have made. Huh. Right, even before tearing <laughs> off the back end, it's going to pay me dividends, I reckon, to have the truck around the other side. Why couldn't they just let me enter from either side? Oh, there's a character model, we're actually in there driving the truck. But the foggy old glass isn't making it easy. Keep a bit of a distance from the ship so we can arc it over. Good, good. The corner pieces were accessible. That was a problem on one of the previous ships. And why we had to use explosives. Whoa, okay. And it might be a problem here as well. This looks like it's exactly the same uh, the same issue. The corner bit here. Yeah, I think it is. Hmm. Strange, I wonder why. Maybe they use the same model when piecing the ship together. And it has the same inaccessible cutty bits. Because this should have broken apart right here, but it did not. Well, we'll deal with that last if we have to. We do have spare money with which to buy the explosives if we need them. Ah. 
Uh, I need to stretch a bit here. I'm putting poor Bangladeshi man through the ropes whilst I'm just sitting here chilling out. Um, there we go. Can you collapse the whole ship and collect everything? You can collapse the whole ship and collect a lot of things, but not really everything. There are certain items that if you collapse the ship, you're going to destroy them. Those items are the ones that you need to extract via crane. And typically, those items are vital for completing the contracts, which is where you make lots of money. But if you crane out big stuff first, which is what I usually try to do, then you can just collapse the whole ship and you can do that how you want. You can take out some important support areas. You could just go ham with explosives, but explosives cost money. That's not a free solution. I have not been going ham on explosives, but maybe I will on the later ships. It's a question of scaling, right? $15 to spend on explosives for a ship worth $200 might not be that great. But maybe on a ship worth several thousand, going ham with those might be good. Or at least cost effective. It's all up to you, and by you I mean me. It is up to me. This almost certainly needs explosives, though. This seems to be bugged out. This corner should have been extracted. Where's the gold come from? There are some cargo pallets that contain gold. As well as other materials. I think that's the only place we've ever seen gold spawn, though. Too much to ask for that to land. Oh my days, I keep... Oh, that landed though. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. Oh. Alright. Ah, of course, there are connectors. Those are vital to take out. Let alone everything else. Oh, it's a... Uh, it's a whole lot of decompression. God's name is that beeping coming from? It's driving me batty, so it is. <laughs> right, once I take off this backside, I'm gonna find and shut down whatever's making that beeping noise. I'm guessing it's a lecky box. when I stand over there. Holy moly, there's a lot of a lot of connectors to take apart. Well, if I must. find drugs in the hull. We have not found drugs in hulls so far, and I have a feeling this game doesn't want to deal with the age rating that comes with adding drugs to it. 
For a game that does have drugs, I picked up a game called Definitely Not Fried Chicken. And I don't know if I like the game or not. The tutorial doesn't seem very good. And that's about all I've played through of it so far. What appealed to me was picking up that game which was all about having uh, fronts to pour your drugs through and see if I could run it as a an actual legitimate business. But there are plenty of unappealing things about that game. Right... Do I take out the floor as well? Mm, sure. Really, this will a nasty chain reaction. Okay, good. We're not in the middle of a chain reaction. But we're still hearing that bleeding bleeping. <laughs> uh. It's a nice thing to have to consider that taking out the floor just makes moving around a bit harder. Good. I was... I will admit I was a bit worried that that would explode a whole lot more than I wanted it to. Some of the negative reviews I've seen about this game have been about there being uh, breakpoints that tear apart far too much of a ship. And I haven't seen any of those so far. It's even you, come on. Feeling kind of good about just taking off the whole back side now, so grab the torch and get to work. There's a ridiculous amount of these that we've got to take care of, sadly. The radio upgrades make the crane work faster. I've been ignoring them entirely because the crane has never been a uh, linchpin. It's never been a choke point in operations. Because it's so rare that you actually do extract something with the crane. The only time that even came close was when we had six pieces to extract in a row when we finished off a ship. But that's only because I'd neglected to pull them out. kind of hard to justify the $200 upgrade that it is to upgrade the crane. But the best justification is I want to see just how fast that crane goes, so I will probably get it when I go back to my next set of upgrades. Because thankfully at this point $200 is starting to not be a lot of money. As we have learned today, the average annual wage for one of our poor Bangladeshis here, is about 3,000 US dollars. Although we still don't know the Big Mac index over there. So the fact that we've been working for a few days and we've got a thousand dollars is surely good for us. I don't think the bombs upgrade, you just have to buy those one at a time. Oh, but I really want to get the rope upgrade, yeah. Mm. Maybe I really should go back and do some upgrading. But I also... I want to put as much into the truck in one go as possible. And I want to see just how much of a chain bonus we can get. So other than fulfilling the contracts, I might not liquidate any of my materials here. And well, I just have to make do with what we have. All right, are you willing to go? Hmm, includes all this stuff on the ground, so I'm going to have to cut through these as well. Let's start it from here.
yeah, longer grapple distance with the better rope. And I've been running into situations where I'm not able to make the jump that I want to. Well, it's, it's going to be hard to forget the part that I need to use, use explosives for. That's probably when I'm going to be making my journey back to the upgrade area. And then I'll see about getting the rope and crane along with the explosives that I need to pick up. Come on now. Ah, it's the spirit. I think at this point getting upgrades for my already fairly upgraded items is starting to clock in at about the $1,000 part. It would be lovely to be able to throw more than 180 kilograms, it would be nice to be able to grab more than four items at a time. But at this point the situation is satisfactory, it's just that it could be more satisfactory. Also, I neglected to burn through this. Feel that foreboding. Decompression. Which means I need to do the same over here. No, I already did it over there. Excellent. <coughs> Pardon me. Yep, okay, so the parts that are in the way are the parts that are bugged out. At least I believe they're bugged out. There are there's a breakpoint missing here and here. And I don't even know if sawing the center part would be enough for that. Regardless, I can't reach it. Can I? I can kind of see its slight glimmer there. We do have the range or the angle for it. Yeah, if only that would be enough. And this is as low as we can crouch as well. So you can see another breakpoint right there. And whilst we do typically have a lot of range, it doesn't seem to be enough for this. Nope, explosives are what it takes. Go get him. Currently got eight tons in the truck and we barely touched this ship. I like it. Not to mention one and a half tons sitting in the warehouse. Recht, upgrade blueprint, please. Yeah, we'd only pick up one ex uh, well, zero extra items in the next glove blueprint, but we'd pick up slightly faster. The crate kind of interests me, but oh god, 900, no thank you. Let's get the crane upgrade blueprint. One, two, three rope upgrades if we can. Maybe the torch as well. Hmm, both of the torches are starting to get very expensive. Yeah, probably too expensive to afford getting the actual upgrades. Those are just the blueprints. You actually have to buy the upgrade here. And he looks very happy to see Namaste. us. Namaste yourself. How much for this? Done. Rope upgrade one. Yeah, easy money. Done. Upgrade to four. Just for an extra meter? Yeah, sure, we can do that. We have plenty of materials thanks to going completely nose to tail. I reckon if you just did the contracts and then moved away without scrapping everything, you wouldn't have nearly as vast amounts of materials as I have here, but it seems that going the whole hog has done us rather well. Crane upgrade costs a bundle, holy moly. Two and a half tons of metals, all of our liquids. Also this mobile cargo thing. 
You can drop items into it to collect. Yeah, okay. So, what? We can buy more of them? I don't even like them, so I'm not too fond on taking them. Tell you what, I'll, I'll buy myself five explosives. Five? I'm going to buy that exor extremely expensive crane upgrade. Guess I got myself five explosives. Bum by man coming in just to do a point stump. There's no great reward for that, it's just a way to show pointless plebes that you've risen above them all, either by lurking meticulously or gambling very correctly. Question is which was it for which was it for you, bum? Right, explosives. Get to work for me. And just like that. Uh, just like that. Come on, we're meant to be able to pick this up. There we go. If you did not have the money for explosives there and had already sold all your goods, you might have been in a pickle. But that seems quite unlikely. You could just scrap some other stuff, sell it, and buy the explosives. Either way, we got it. <laughs> Nice. Bake it away, toys. I just, I just want to sit here and watch it be uh, taken away from me. And curiously, what is on this? 1.2 tons of not very good metal. Hey! Now we can see our truck, and that's going to make disassembling the rest of the stuff that bit easier. And there, go there it goes to be gobbled up by that really scary looking grindy machine that we threw our own body into with a reckless abandon. Right. Where do I even start here? Ooh, well, start with the washing machines and such. There's also an argument for grabbing the wood. Just so the contract is fulfillable and get some extra dough that way. There's also the idea that says, hey, put that new rope at Whoa, look at that rope! Sadly, it still is tricky to make my way up when there are guardrails in the way. reason not to have them. Right, I can't get too cocky here. I need to I need to deal with the parts that I need to extract first. I already took out one of them. Good job me for that. <laughs> oh the the truck is even more superhuman than we are. It's currently Carrying eight tons, and it's going to carry a whole lot more. We're going to take this wood first. If nothing else, make sure that contract is good to go in case we, for whatever reason, need or want a fat chunk of change. Boom! Just like that, 130 kilos of wood that we can just go. <laughs> Similar story over here. Let's not miss that scrap of stuff on the ground either. We go. What did this person say they wanted all this wood for? Well, it doesn't matter. They've got it now. And that means we can keep our eye on the next contract, for which we need gold monitors and fans. Monitors, eh? Those are things that are just going to be lying around. I thought I'd already scooped up all the things that were just lying around, but evidently not. Let's go on a quick hunt for the monitors and fans. 
After that, the 20 kilos of gold are going to come from this engine block here, right? Precisely. So we absolutely cannot destroy this thing by undermining the floor below it. That would be bad, okay. A fan! A bleeding fan. I didn't throw the fan in here, did I? Apparently it's just got iron and steel in it. Mm -hmm. Monitors are on the floor crane thingy. Thought you might have meant this, but no. Does this have gold on it, though? It's got copper and aluminium. The floor crane thingy. Oh, you mean the, the wee basket thing? Uh, I just inspected it, and it didn't say that it had any monitors in it. This might be a decent idea to free it up, but it looks like a lot of freeing. Hold on, there's a room over there. A room that needs my gentle touch. Oil in you, not gold, so you're not of vital importance, but I still want you. You're just electric, but there's a monitor! Easy money! But we're still on the hunt for the fan. Potentially even a fan of gaming. Right, I'm going to take this wall out. It might give me easier access to my truck. Surely I won't regret this. It's not going to make the... Make the floor fall away, right? Maybe I should start with this wall. Oh, actually, I can't really do anything since my hands are full. Uh, just casually walking around with 180 kilos here. I cannot lift 180 kilos. My best deadlift was... I forget if it was 150 or 135. Probably 150, same as the squat. But walking around with that weight? Holy moly, no thank you. This is how Bengali man is just made of firmer stuff than I. Also, that was only one monitor. I needed two more, apparently. Is there one around here? Might have been one in that box. How about you, Marvin? You can outlift me. Have you upped any of your PBs lately? Oh, that's a good view. Alright, let me add it. down. Let me at my truck. Hey. Oh, there's quite a lot to take out above you if I want to extract you proper. And I do want to. continue to really get in my way. Maybe I should just somewhat controllably demolish the top two levels here. As far as I can tell, they don't have anything that I need to crane away. And it will make taking care of these engines and such a whole lot easier. Just doing a quick tour to make absolutely sure there's nothing that I'm going to irrevocably destroy. We already got the gold, the monitors, the fans, that's great. Uh, well, not the gold, but everything but the gold. Where's the gold? Yep, excellent, okay. 
Let's get to work then. Everything above floor level here has got to go. They have risen from the bottom to the top. It's got to stop. Gotta be a little ginger about it though. Because if I destroy the gold, I lose that contract, and that contract is worth loads of money united. To do something gingerly is to do something timidly and with forethought. I'm not referring to red hair. I recall Jake wanting to take care of the beeping. Actually, I had managed to completely blank out the bleeping in my head, but now that you've brought it up, I can hear it again. Uh, why are you going to do this to me? Is it? That's not the truck. Right here. What could it all mean? Is it this thing? I don't know, and I don't like what you've done to me here. Alright, let's just keep destroying until we find it then. And put an end to that cursed noise one way or another. Cannot get rid of this flooring or else it would undo a whole lot of what I'm trying to do here. Well, the thing is, we already disabled the electric, uh, the el electric box. It's possible that there's another one, but we haven't found it, nor have we found any other electrified items. Gotta be careful. I'm tearing apart a little too much floor here. I only want to take out the floor insofar as it's connected to the walls. the quote about kicking out the floor and then the whole thing will come crashing down. Wasn't that a lead up to the beer hall coach? <laughs> oh, hey, that's a point. The electric box. I didn't destroy the box. I destroyed the wall behind the box. And thanks to that, it probably didn't disable the bleeping. Ah, clever. And, uh, aggravating. Kicking down the door and it all falls down was allegedly said about the Soviet Union. There. Well, 
did collapse. But that's just what they wanted us to think. If it hadn't, then you couldn't live in Hungary now. Well, then maybe I'd want to live in the Soviet Union. Who knows? <laughs> Regrettably, I'll never know. Well, maybe they re re-establish themselves and I can go and visit. It's got to be someone's ideal way of living. A lot of people seem to wonder why in the world I want to live in Hungary. And they ask me very, very accusingly, like there's something wrong with me for wanting to live here. Some Hungarians too. You wouldn't want to live in the Soviet <laughs> Union, trust me. Should I trust you? How long did you live in the Soviet Union? Well, I suppose there's former East Germany, isn't there? Boy, there is a whole lot to hammer down on this ship. But we're just getting to work. I'm starting to wonder if this approach for taking out this part is a bad idea. I feel dangerously close to taking out the um, the floor here. So what I'm actually going to do is focus a bit on the specifically the bit of ceiling above you, since it's very quick and easy to lob away what we do pick up straight into my truck there and then get you extracted before I do a far larger controlled demolition of the upper area here you tell me you're not free fall I lived in the Soviet Union for several years, and I highly do not recommend it, so I can't exactly go back in time and live there yet. Yeah, this is a ship that we accidentally blew up with a gas leak. This time we have rectified that. We turned off the gas instead of just cutting into random hazardous looking bits just for the heck of it. Because, hey, what does this do? Boy, that engine or boiler or steerer or whatever it is is going to be full of dents by the time we deliver it, but that's not my problem. After all, we're delivering it to further break it down anyway. A few dents probably won't make a difference. Well, it's a bit more than a few at this point. Oh yeah, now I could be a security guard there, get my old security job back. I did enjoy my security job. Probably involve a lot more tackling on people, clawing my way up the red ladder. Isn't that what we're all looking for in life? Right, are you willing to extract? Because it's going to speed my life up a bit. Donk. Donk. Oh yeah, there we go. Now we can get to work on a whole lot more of this. And I don't need to worry about taking care of this flooring because you are situated on a lower part. Although I probably want to get rid of this overhead bit so it makes it easier for me to throw things out to my truck. 
<laughs> we could hear the phantom beeping once again. There we go. Gives me a clean throw through for that. But this is vital. There's gold and whatnot here, and we want that gold. Taste of it, the smell of it, the feel of it. I didn't know Jake was gold member, but it all makes sense now. <laughs> Never saw that movie, but I did see that scene. Someone linked it possibly during the uh, the gold rush part of the RimWorld campaign. If so, a very fitting moment for it. Right, more needs to be taken care of here. Okay, so I could just bring all this crashing down. If I could just kick the door down. <laughs> yeah, we found the monitors and such. We can see in the top left, we've fulfilled it all. We just need this gold. <laughs> My great desire is to really just have a big demolition here. That means a lot of places that I need to detach. But very carefully not taking out the flooring. You know, this floor that I'm currently hammering. It's an idea to use explosives, but uh, I don't want to risk the explosives also taking out the underbelly of that. Maybe once I have this taken out, I'll start experimenting with more explosives. Because at this point, explosives only costing $15 each doesn't feel quite so prohibitive to use experimentally. But yeah, only after this thing comes out, you're worth hundreds of dollars of worth of contract money. like me going up there. Still doesn't like me going up there. Hmm. I already did upgrade the rope. Rather a lot, in fact, which is making me feel a bit disappointed in its uh, lack of utility there. Kind of excited at the idea of seeing how this performs in multiplayer. But I think currently the multiplayer is under beta testing, which is a bit sad. So I think you have to sign up and take part in it. Maybe it'll be complete before interest wanes in this game. It will eventually. It always does. No game is interesting forever, except for those people that are still playing Warframe 5,000 hours in. How does he manage it? Hmm. Huh. 
Uh, no, I can't think of any game I've played for 5,000 hours. If you're going to count Europe Universalis, then you're counting work time there, and uh, I'd have a hard time calling that playing. Feels like more and more of this is coming apart. We'll get a clear and clear image of exactly what we need to take down for the whole upper structure to fall, but I don't think there's a lot keeping it up right now. It's a very nasty joke you made there. You might have a hard time calling it playing, but I sure as hell remember the chocolate factory talk. I thought it was the sausage factory talk. It wasn't much of a talk, just an analogy. Video games are like sausages, so I'll watch them getting made. That said, I did go to Cadbury's Chocolate Factory a long time ago. Watching them throw out all those bars of chocolate. <laughs> Just because something spoiled on the wrapping. Oh. <laughs> Tears in my eyes. Okay, okay. What is even holding this thing up? I, I do have the Skyrim brain bug. There's a voice in my head telling me to install Skyrim and just play it. Which is difficult because when I finished playing Skyrim for the weekly one shot, I think I said something along the lines of this is one of the worst games I've played. I never want to play it again. But there's that alluring fantasy of just wandering around in a western RPG doing whatever. But I absolutely need the uh, mortal children mod. The idea of them being unkillable does not sit right. Yeah, I should probably give uh, Oblivion the shot first though, because Oblivion I did enjoy. But hey, we could have had Oblivion as a long play, but Dave the Diver kicked its arse. Yes, nobody really believed in Oblivion or Todd's words. <laughs> I feel like I spent thousands of hours watching you play Rune Factory. Ah, Rune Factory. I actually got Rune Factory 5 for the PC because I wanted to see if it was any better on PC than on Switch. The answer is yes, it is better. Not better enough to really justify playing it or buying it or what have you, but... Okay. Well, that certainly brought it all crashing down. The Soviet Union ship is now in tatters. But I don't think we've freed up enough space to extract the juicy gold. <laughs> or at least we're not going to find out just yet until we clear away some of this debris. <laughs> I played Rune Factory 4 because of you. Ah, Rune Factory 4 is one of my top five games of all time. It's so, so good. <laughs> In my view, it just does everything right for the fantasy farming sim genre. And I think it is far superior to Stardew Valley. But that I'm willing to concede as a matter of taste. Stardew Valley has mod support, multiplayer, huge amounts of content. But I got three main problems with Stardew Valley. It's ugly. 
The characters are boring, and the world is boring. And I don't play those games to live in a boring world. I think they tried too hard to make the characters feel real. I rather liked my quirky colourful bunch in Rune Factory 4. And I even love to hate them. God, I hate Doug the Mugs so much. I wish I could dig a ditch to roll Margaret's lifeless body into. But that's alright. As long as I can spend my evenings filling Dolce up like a water skin, everything was A-OK. -okay. You get a two-for-one deal with her as well. She comes with Pico. There was actually a polygamy mod made for Rune Factory 5. I was interested in checking that out. Because one of the annoying things about getting married in those games is you lock yourself out of the content of seeing the other marriage content. Although I guess you could look that online. Might actually save myself some time by looking that online. I'm busy trying to give Lucy some childbearing hips in Rune Factory 5 at the moment. But it's slow progress. <laughs> you say that, but you purchased the Doug DLC for Rune Factory 3 with your own hard-earned cash. Uh, did I now? I thought I got that for free. I hope I got that for free. Yeah, Silu. Silu. One of the more horrible things is that Doug comes back in Rune Factory 5. How in God's name was he considered popular enough to be brought back for Rune Factory 5? I think it's just because he's a dwarf. He's one of the long-lived species. And Rune Factory 5 is canonically like a hundred years or more after Rune Factory 4. So they couldn't exactly have Amber or Chlorica appear there. So they brought in the elf and the dwarf. You know, my two least favourite characters from Rune Factory 4 and they're brought back for Rune Factory 5 as opposed to Rune Factory 4 that brings back Barrett from Rune Factory 2 and Raven from Rune Factory 3 now there's some solid choices anyway love the game highly recommend it if you can tolerate enough anime nonsense Alright, do we think we can extract you? No, because we didn't detach you from the bottom. But I think if we did... And maybe got rid of this part right here. Oh, we might be onto something. A lot of Z fighting going on. See the... The graphical distortion there. Two elements occupying the same space. There we go. They can occupy the same space in my truck. That truck's becoming so dense. Oh, okay, that was never really there. Right, let's work on extracting this then. It is of vital importance for the Arpita contract. The innkeeper in Rune Factory 3, that was Blaze. If I recall, he cannot handle alcohol and he always alludes to a story that he never tells. Rune Factory 3 was the first really good Rune Factory game in my opinion. The main problems were twofold. One, it actually didn't have that much content. It was a very small game. And worst of all, Marriage was locked behind the end game. Oh god, and you had to raise. In order to actually do that end game dungeon to marry your waifu, you actually had to grow giant crops to unlock doors, if I'm remembering well, and I think I am. And those take a while to grow, so. Yeah. But at the time, it was amazing. Maybe they fixed some of that with Rune Factory 3 Special, I don't know. Hmm. 
It's an interesting <laughs> idea that it, it's just absorbing these. Since the volume of the truck is not changing, it's becoming denser and denser. Soon enough it's going to have its own gravitational field to pull us all in. All right, get me my contract. Merihinge indeed. And then we're going to liquidate that down for cash. Oh, I missed a, missed a wee room of items here. I think I might get a little bit curious with the explosives. <laughs> Some girders just pinging off there. I love to see it. That was tight though. You need every single bit of gold on this ship to fulfill that contract. Which means that engine or steering or boiler block. And the other load. How many ships to make the truck collapse into a neutron star? So your ship, uh, your truck gets emptied between each ship. So you'd have to take the biggest ship and uh, throw it all into there in one go. And the Fuso appears to be the largest one with 15 and 9 and another one and another one tons of materials. It's a lot of materials. Is that really bigger than this ship here? Oh yeah, it is. Also, I just noticed we're keeping the collectibles in our home here. Our legally distinct Space Marine. I don't think that's legally distinct. You've even put your branding on it, man. Games Workshop are not going to be happy with that. If they ever know about it. There's no reason to let them know now, is there? Anyway, I came along here to fill my contracts. $240 and $300 and $600. All transferred to my bank account. But we are absolutely tearing apart this whole ship. Even though that's not the clever thing to do from really any perspective, I want to. And that's the best reason to do anything. In my humble and correct opinion. Because I want to be correct. I hope the people that did end up picking up this game are having anywhere near as much fun with it as I am. Because I do really enjoy this. I'd hate the I'd, I'd hate to think that some people will go, Oh man, that looks like fun, I'm going to pick up the game myself. And then they just have nowhere near as much fun for whatever reason. I never talk up a game I don't think is fun. Uh, is that actually true? I think if you look really hard you can find an exception to that. But nothing comes to mind. You're a bad influence on my wallet, says Bazzy Joe. In more ways than one, you've been subscribed to this channel. You get nothing for that, you know? Drop your sub, buy more games. Well, that's not entirely true. Maybe you're holding out for that punishment game. But I don't think we've had a Bazzy Joe punishment game. I'm scrolling through my memory banks now, and nothing's coming up. Alright, although this is not necessary to crane out, we're still craning it out. Because if we don't, we might accidentally blow it up. Oh, quite a few people have asked uh, Grim Trigger. It's been poor timing for poor Dave the Diver, but yeah, he's on the schedule for this Saturday. <laughs> I took a week off in Budapest, and my intention was to return and go straight back to Dave the Diving. But then I got sick, so I was off for another week. And now that I'm back, well, I wanted to do my Christmas stream. And then after that, I wanted to play around with some games that I picked up in the Winter Sale. And one of the three games that I was playing around with was this, and this is amazing, so we're playing more of it. But Dave the Diver is on schedule for Saturday. Get back into the swim of things. I want to carry this away so that it doesn't accidentally get blown up by explosives. Poor Dave beats Oblivion only to lose to Bangladesh. <laughs> I wonder if Oblivion will get another shot on the 
long play vote. The thing is, I try not to make long play votes that just have one obvious game that's going to beat everyone else. Oblivion is such a mainstream game that it had a distinct advantage over pretty much everything. So it was important to put in Dave the Diver, which was, although I wouldn't exactly call it mainstream, it certainly had a lot of mainstream appeal going for it. So I figured those two would duke it out, and that would give an opportunity for a third horse to come racing up and potentially snag victory. But as it happens, Dave the Diver won out big time. And just as well, it's been a very fun game. I've played Oblivion enough to form the opinion that it shouldn't be played. Oh no, I think Oblivion just has enough opposition because it shouldn't be played. Should it though? But I had so much fun playing Oblivion in the weekly one-shot. How could playing it for longer possibly be bad? Riddle me that. Holy smokes, like 20 tons of this ship has now been yoinked. Any interest in Baldur's Gate 3 at all? I'm assuming that's what BG3 is. Uh, no. I've watched some of it being played. It doesn't look terribly exciting. This isn't what I want at all. Where are my explodies? Alright, let's see what you do here. Oh my lord, that's pathetic! <laughs> okay, okay, so I guess you really only have that for the doors if you're not clever enough to go around them. Or, uh, bugged out parts of the ship. That was, that was sad. That was very sad. Well, that's okay. That's just growing up for you. Let's fill this bad boy up so we don't feel bad about <laughs> chucking it away partially empty. Do you play RPGs like Cyberpunk? No, that's really not my kind of game. Oh, right, you're completely full, aren't you? Too bad. RPGs in general, Western and Japanese, both tend to fall pretty flat with me. There are exceptions, of course. I love me some Final Fantasy VII, and the aforementioned Oblivion was good fun. But as a general rule of thumb, I don't bother with RPGs. I see things like Cyberpunk coming out, and I'm, I'm already incredibly uninterested. Oh yeah, Kingdom Come Deliverance, another great example. Very well made game, Kingdom Come Deliverance. I don't know how it would be possible to... to strongly dislike that game. Overflowing with content, it's huge, it's nuanced, it's beautiful. It's well voiced, great delivery, great lines. I often complain bitterly about writing in games, but I cannot complain about Kingdom Comes, except maybe at the very end where you can't beat the game because Hans Capon refuses to leave until he gets laid. Like, what the hell were they thinking? <laughs> okay, we're here. That was a lovely, fulfilling story. Time to ride off into the sunset and lay the grounds for the sequel. Actually, Henry. I ever told you just how randy I am? Yes, yes. I refuse to leave until I find some wench and fill her up with my noble baby batter. Okay, thank you, Hans. That was just the shift in tone that we needed. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just, it's like... It's kind of got the, the biggest swing in terms of great game to terrible ending I can think of. But setting aside that ending, a marvellous game, 
Uh, I did stream the game for a weekly one shot and I streamed a full playthrough and I played another playthrough of it in my own time. Now that is not a small game. And as a man who has an unbelievably large backlog of games, it's kind of hard to justify that kind of time for a lengthy RPG multiple times, but I did because it was just that good. And I am looking forward to the eventual Kingdom Come 2. <laughs> we're, we're not a murder hobo though, right? I mean, I know we shanked that witch in cold blood, but she was a witch. Didn't even try to deny it. Now, some people were very unhappy that I spent about 20 or 30 minutes real time trying to glitch my way through a wall just because I didn't want to play around with that guy that was keeping me imprisoned. But you know what? I got through that wall and we were able to stick it to the pole. I forget the guy's name, but he was he was Polish, right? Zurchivia. I God knows. Anyway, he was slumped over dead. As God intended. If God had wanted the pole to live, he wouldn't have made checks. Uh, no love for the Anno series. I played Anno 1602, I played Anno 1404, I played Anno 1800. And 1800 was really promising, but I think just fundamentally I don't like Anno. I don't like the way that you build cities in Anno. Everything's very area of effecty, and it ends up with these pretty nasty looking gridded up cities where you have you've got the center big um, town hall or whatever exuding its area of influence and then you build everything around it and you got little pockets of grids built around and everything's on bloody islands it's like I'm playing on a civilization map and I hate civilization map generation so no I, I could not get into Anno like I said it was very promising but the issues were too fundamental not saying it was a bad game. Hell, I did beat the game and everyone told me I played it wrongly, but that's okay. Nay for me, though. <laughs> exactly, Marvin. Frostpunk just had such a problem with that, didn't it? My, what a cozy game this is. You can kind of just mindlessly hammer away here. Very zen. I feel sorry for the kind of person that can't relax to this. I liked Anno until they decided to do a giant dick move and pull Anno 1800 from Steam before they released because of a bribe from Epic. Yeah, but those Epic bribes are very big. They never make those numbers public, do they? <laughs> well, I've, uh, I've received those numbers. Holy moly. You, you, you'd be an idiot not to take the money. I mean, sure, it's a dick move, but I can hardly hold it against them. The numbers got public due to a new lawsuit against Apple. Oh, well, how about that? It's like getting tons of guaranteed sales. So, okay, put it on Epic. No one's going to play your game, but you're going to sell. You're going to make money as if loads of people did. And it's not the developers of the game making that decision most time. Taking a look at Manor Lord, I have not. That game was in early access for a long time. I don't know if it ever came out of early access. It was on my check this game out when it comes out list. And then it took so long to take uh, to actually come out that uh, all interest had waned. Which is another big reason that I'm quite anti-early access. Kills enthusiasm. It's like when you hear a game's rele uh, releasing, you oh when? Oh, it's coming in like three years. Oh, okay. Am I meant to stay excited for three years? Monster Hunter... What's the next one called? I don't know, but a new mainline Monster Hunter game's coming out. 
It was coming out in 2025. What? Why even tell me that? You plan to keep a hype train going for that long? Wilds, that's it, yeah. Now, I loved Monster Hunter World. A contentious opinion to have. But I've been playing Monster Hunter for longer than pretty much anyone else. I got the very first game out on PS2. So I can understand where the old guard are coming from. It changes so much. It changed it for the better. The game was getting real stale. Yeah, Dragon Swagma 2. That's, that's the next big release that I'm waiting on. That is due out in January, right? No, no, it's March. Crumbs, the game in January that I'm thinking of is none other than Dominion 6. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There are... There's one big risk, and that's that the game doesn't actually change anything. I'm going to fire it up, and it's going to be... Oh, it's just Dominions 5 again. Why am I even playing this? But that might not be the case. And as long as I can get my mods running just fine for that game, we might be looking at a Dominions takeover of the channel. But I know everyone loves that, right? We never had any complaints at the hundreds of hours of Dominions that we've had so far. Why would we get any more? I hope Dom 6 is bad for Jake's sake. I'm glad you're looking out for him, Marvin. I can bet any money Dom 6 is just going to be reskinned Dom 5. Well, based on the screenshots, that's... Maybe the reskinning is the least accurate comment there. Not being reskinned at all, it's just it's the same skin. But uh, what matters about Dominions is not the skin, but the bones, the cartilage, the flesh. Also, for the love of God, I need some quality of life. If I have to go through the Dominions 5 item organization screen one more time, then I am going to, uh, well, put up with it and continue playing, but I will moan about it to no end. Because that is one bad UI. Not only that, but eventually that DLC is going to be finished for the Long Dark, and I can get back to that. Got so many games. I feel so bad for those streamers who have one game. They just stream one game. That's all they do, they're practically typecast to it. And no matter how much they love that game, I'm sure they're going to get sick of it eventually. And then what are they going to do? Try moving on to another game, your viewership numbers just collapse. Or maybe they maybe they feel like they can't move on to another game and they just stick with it. Oh man. It took a very long time, but even I got tired of EU4, but thank goodness this was a variety channel. Always has been. The very first stream of this channel was a game for the NES called Rescue Embassy Mission. And the two hours of hell segment is almost as old as this channel. What was the first game I did on that? Was it Resident Evil 2? I think it was Resident Evil 2. It was Resident Evil 2, Draken, Pilot Wings. Kick up cubicle? Yeah, some games were <laughs> some games were ran long ago on that. I think the first game I tuned into was EnviroBear. God, what in the world were you thinking? <laughs> and again, what was I thinking? There's no way I would have found that game. It must have been recommended to me as a two hours of hell. Or was it a punishment game? Definitely a punishment game. There's no way I would have ran that as a two-ho. <laughs> I 
But yeah, being able to just pick up different games and stream them, rather than uh, still playing EU4. Or imagine if I transitioned to Dominions and Dominions was all I did. Oh lordy, now I love Dominions. But it's an, it's an exhausting game to play. I like to play one big run of Dominions per week, and I'm good. I don't finish a, uh, a 15 hour campaign and then go, well that was good, time to start again and do it all over again. No, I'm satisfied for a while. The first two hours of hell were, says Thagnus, one of the oldest channel members around. Resident Evil 2, Pilot Wings, Warlock, Draken, then Kickle, Cubicle. Wildly different games and genres, the only thing they have in common is that they are all considerably retro games. That is, PlayStation 1, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo Entertainment System. The genres survival horror, flight simulator, action platformer, RPG, and puzzle. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I'm the, uh, the youngest of three brothers in a family full of gamers. Mother loves her adventure games. Father likes his puzzle games. Eldest brother loves his RPGs and... Middle brother loves his fighting games, but me, I'm the perfected mass of all of them. Except I kind of suck at fighting games and I don't really like a lot of RPGs. Got a favorite console? It's going to be hard to say no to the Super Nintendo. It would actually probably be a toss up between the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation 2. Mm, yeah, the PS2's library was just unreal. It was huge, so many of them. And it was at just the right age in gaming where there were double A budgets and a sense of experimentation. So you got some really interesting games. They weren't all good, many of them terrible. But it was still good to see them see the light of day and have just enough budget and power to still be enjoyable in a lot of ways. It's not like now where it feels like a very risk-averse gaming uh, or game development culture. It feels like only the indies are putting in any, any level of risk. The Super Nintendo though, oof, that again, massive library, loads of different kinds of games. Vibrant and colourful. I do love me the Super Nintendo, but I feel like a lot of that is nostalgia. Is the PS2 the best-selling console ever? I thought the Switch recently outsold the PS2. Uh, no, the Nintendo Wii. The Nintendo Wii cleaned the floor with the PS2. Also, yeah, it was a DVD player. That felt really futuristic. Yeah, you could, you could just pick up a PlayStation 2 game for anything from 5 quid to 20 quid. So it wasn't exactly a prohibitively expensive console to buy games for, either. Not like the Nintendo 64 era, where you gotta spend 60 quid. And what do you get? Oh, you've got Buck Bumble. Oh, freaking great, Buck Bumble. There's one good thing about that game, and that's the opening theme. And it's a pretty great opening theme. But everything else about that game is just pure ass. So yeah, the Nintendo 64, not my favorite console. Has like, uh, five decent games. Eh, maybe more like 12 decent games. And that's still 12 more games than we get for a PS5. Oh, you got Superman 64. The Leviathan DLC of its age. I never did play it, but it was hard to miss all the reviews about Superman 64. Jake, can you tell Acro why you found it so weird? Why you found so weird in the Ryuk summary video? What? Can you tell Acro why you. Oh, why I sound so weird? 
uh, because I made it about nine years ago. And I was sitting in a tiny room in the loft in a house in Edinburgh, freezing my bits off because it was December 20... something. I'd made a promise to get that done by the end of the year, and of course I hadn't I hadn't done anything for it until that evening. So I just went and sat in the upstairs room. I think the rest of the house had all gone back to their respective families for Christmas. So I was just sitting there with a whole bunch of footage. So what I did was I just lumped all the footage together, turned on my microphone, watched the footage and spoke. You can even hear where I'm getting hoarse during the video. And I don't think I brought any water with me and I was talking for, what was it, 40 minutes or 60 minutes? No do-overs, just did the whole damn thing in one sitting. Hopefully that answers the question, but it can be hard to tell what exactly Acronymous is asking at times. Yeah, sitting in a freezing cold Scottish attic. Still a pleasant memory. <laughs> Sometimes your characters want to taunt the girders. So let's just get this done good and proper. I'm going to be saying goodbye to a big chunk of this hall once I've cut, all th uh, cut through all of these. I was commenting on you sounding differently. Well, I still lived in Scotland back then, so... I probably sounded more Scottish. But I also think I spoke quite a bit quieter back then. I had a house full of housemates, so... I didn't want to seem very loud, especially since a lot of my streaming was done at awkward hours, courtesy of streaming, uh, courtesy of uh, working my weird security shifts. And yeah, tone of voice does change over time, even over the course of a couple of years. There was a streamer I was checking out not too long ago and I checked out their older videos and they did sound extremely different. You were getting hoarse, Jake. What does that mean? Um, if you talk for so long, your throat gets sore and your voice gets hoarse. Not horse, horse. Oh yes, you can choose to just believe I was getting a horse. Oh man, this is almost therapeutic. I should run some kind of therapy here where people tell me about their problems and I just direct them to a video game. Visual upgrade for the torch here as well. Seems safer to use with a longer neck now. Right, are you willing to go away? The answer is yes and yes. Get off the craneable equipment. Get off the internet. Yeah, this question comes up a fair bit. Can we ride the parts as they get taken away? The answer is mostly no, but we have found one situation where yes, you can. I suspect we're only going to find that in the warships, but you know what? I'm going to give it a go here. And the crane is working uh, considerably faster than it did before. Yeah, no, he just wants me to get off. Ah, I have an idea! Okay, no, no. Even if I suspend myself in the air with that, it doesn't count. Hmm. 
Oh ho ho ho! Uh, but if we're flying, courtesy of the rope... Then it doesn't really care that much, eh? We can check out the whole shanty town from here. But yeah, we don't want to land inside those things. That is nightmare fuel. Just being crushed to death in those things. Ooh. Anyway, Geronimo, enjoy your vertigo. I do. I like vertigo. <laughs> I can see my shack from up here. <laughs> Someone's going in and stealing my space marine models. <laughs> oh, now Glasgow's a lovely place these days. Like anywhere, just don't just don't go into the wrong streets and you'll be fine. I know Dark Young likes to paint a horrible vision of Scotland, but come on, he's from the nastiest part of Ayrshire. Such a chump having bought those explosives. Game's so good, how does it manage to make explosions not fun? <laughs> I lived in Edinburgh for several months, it was absolutely divide. Oh, yeah, I love Edinburgh. Not usually one to like capital cities, but Edinburgh is one of about three exceptions to that rule. Edinburgh, Vilnius. Budapest, I love them. Right, how much do we have to get through here? Quite a lot, right? Oh well. Let's get ripping and tearing. Probably starting with the floor, actually. Maybe if we just take out the floor quite right, we can take out the floor and the upper level. I was in Edinburgh when the garbage pickup was on strike. Ooh, striking. That, uh, that can't have been fun. I've never known the rubbish pickup to be on strike. Wouldn't really bother me anyway, though. I barely make any rubbish. Recycling doesn't appear to be huge around here. But they do do recycling collection every two weeks, so most of what gets taken away from me is recycled. About one bag of garbage every two weeks, and that's about me. Of the job is just taking out these rivets once we get it done. This will all fall apart. Oh, that's right, these parts get lifted out as well, don't they? Okay, that means I need to go up top. That wouldn't work the way I wanted it to. Okay, I can take the ladder then. The ladder then. Okay, then. It's difficult to get up those spots now. And I'm pretty sure I took out all the ways of. Oh, no, still a ladder. Excellent. Ladder still has my back.
Yeah, the rope is pretty great when it works, but you just keep bashing your knees on it and falling down. Maybe it would be too powerful if it just ignored collision and took you to wherever you aimed it. I've certainly thought it through one way or another. <laughs> A double jump upgrades. That wouldn't be too shabby, actually. A welcome bit of movement tech here. Cut, 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 and then there's these two over here. I reckon we could afford the next tier of warship after this. Tearing up at the very thought of it, actually. Maybe this time we won't die to radiation. Well, we didn't die to radiation anyway, but. Maybe have a better run of it. Free you from the oppression. Go. be taken out. What exactly are you attached to? Ah, of course. Still welded on this side too. <laughs> but despite all of our other superpowers, you think double jumping would be too much? Surely not. Alright, how are you feeling about going away now? Easy money. And again, pretty unnecessary to tear apart the rest of the ship like we're doing now, but I'm doing it because I want to do it. It's just inherently enjoyable to tear these ships apart, and ultimately satisfying to watch it all go away, especially when the last bits get taken away by the crane and you're left with just this muddy pile where they drag the ship through initially. I, I think it's a fool's errand to try and explain too much of what you're upgrading. Does the game attempt to explain how the boxes that you're now having access to are able to hold 180 kilos of steel? Or how the flatbed truck is able to hold it all? It's got 30 tons in it right now, and it's still looking good. Sometimes trying to explain things is worse than a... Uh, Worse than no explanation. Damn. <laughs> something, something, brevity, the soul of wit. It's sad that we only get 150 kilos out of dragging that away, though. I mean, that this box I'm throwing right now has more than 150. I could understand if it was useful for a contract, but none of the contracts seem to necessitate truly tearing apart the hull. They probably want to avoid that because that's as, if a contract asked for that, it would essentially be asking you to 100% a ship, and the game's doing a pretty good job of not asking that of the player at all. We had some people yesterday talking about one of the things they didn't like in Hard Space Shipbreaker was that it would tell you what percentage of the ship you're doing, so they're wanting to do 100%, but oh, a, 
a loose screw has flown off in some direction, they can't get it, they can't 100% the ship. Which is why I'd say that anything that, uh, that matters should surely be achievable at 90% or so. You're not going to accidentally 10% of the ship. <laughs> It's a Soviet flatbed truck. It's made of stellinium. It can hold anything. Can it hold Persian logistics? No, but the Persian logistics can hold the truck. It might be good if small contracts need things from the hull or something. That way you get encouraged to demolish it entirely without being forced to. We're well, not forced to do any of the contracts at all. In fact, come to think of it, you're not forced to do anything in this game. We don't have a debt to pay off. Might be encouraging if we did. I do like games where you have to plug away at a debt. Freedom Wars, Animal Crossing. Away you go. Sadly, Freedom Wars is stuck on pretty much the worst portable console made since the N-Gage. The PlayStation Vita never has been a product been so maliciously sabotaged by its own developer, but Sony must have hated the Vita. Oh, the predatory memory cards, absolutely no games, no support. And then they kill it dead. They didn't want that thing to succeed, and I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, then they did the same to the PS4. And the PS5. And I hear the PS3 still has no games. The Wii. There are still people who think that the Wii U is an add-on for the Wii. I thought that, and I live and breathe video games. Oh yeah, yeah, there was Zombie U, wasn't there? It was somewhat appealing, but maybe someday I'll just emulate the Wii U. <laughs> PS3 has no games? What are these weird discs I have then? I don't know, probably ports and the remaster of Final Fantasy X? Sure ain't got any game. There's a song about it, so it must be true. It's been cut out? Yes, yes it has. Like a nice, slowly structured retreat away from my own truck. <laughs> this, rate, this rate we are going to be bing bing wahoo in the recycling yard for a long time. We have got 32, 36, 37 tons to recycle and counting. I can almost certainly afford myself a nice upgrade after this, but I want to make sure I can afford the ship first. And I'm not buying anything until I get all this scrapped. I want to see just how big we get that recycling bonus. I'm thinking big. Maybe even a hundred dollars. A 
hundred dollars for doing someone else's job in just a few minutes. What's the easiest money you've ever made in a short amount of time? Once upon a time, my, uh, my boss needed help with computers. He was a very old man. Very old and probably perverted man. Needed help with the PC. He'd managed to lose all of the, uh, the pictures that we'd taken for work. So I just restored the images and got 50 quid for it. I was young enough that 50 quid felt pretty good, but uh, I'd, be, I'd be asking him why he's missing a zero off of that these days. Why did you add probably perverted? Uh, you really want to know? I don't think you really want to know. There are always suspicions about him and the secretary. They were always doing their jobs together, away from the eyes of everyone else. <laughs> no, he didn't feel up my bum. Things, no, my being felt up days were, uh, were long ago. The perverted old ladies that would come to the garden centre. Squishing your cheeks, pinching your bum, slipping you a little bit of money. So it wasn't all bad. Just how things were back then. There we go, come apart. Love the chain reactions here. Yeah, I mean, you don't begrudge them. These poor old people, I was probably the only person they were getting to talk to all week. Their grandchildren all just leaving them to rot away in their homes, but not they could zimmer frame their way down to the old garden center. Get themselves some lovely tulips and whatnot. Some hydrangeas, usually. They always wanted hydrangeas. And a sprightly, long, sprightly young boy to cart it all out for them. Good times. I did enjoy that job. The pay was awful, though. I think it was two quid eighty an hour. Oh, but I remember being raised to three quid ten an hour. Three quid ten an hour. I wouldn't get out of bed for that. But at the time, I had no real idea, so I just did it. What's a garden center? Yeah, it's a it's a big old shop generally where you buy stuff for your garden. <laughs> Plants, planting supplies, fertilizer, pots, Christmas decorations. There was a uh, there was a cafe attached to it as well, so you can go and get yourself some onion soup and some cheesy scones. <laughs> My humble beginnings. That was the first job I ever had. It was the first job I was paid to do. My father made me do his uh, his finances for him. Sure as hell didn't get paid for that, Dad. Now why do you think I was so ungrateful for doing it? Motivation. Anyway, yes. First job was working in a garden centre at the tender age of... I think I was 13 or 14. I gotta say big props to my dad. He just dropped me off in the village one day and said, come back when you get a job. So uh, I just went around everywhere and <laughs> see who was hiring. <laughs> went around a few places that weren't, but when I went to the garden center, I had a job within a few minutes. I just said, hey, name's Jake, uh, looking for a job, you need anything? <laughs> And they showed me around the place, sized me up for a uniform, and then I was employed. Good times. So no, I have not done my time actually deconstructing 
the big old ships in a Bangladeshi dry dock. Wait, is it legal to employ 13 year olds in Scotland? I would assume so. Why would it not be? It's not like I was doing full time work. Still had to go to school. Well, insofar as I went to school. As soon as I got my motorbike, there was not a lot of attendance on my side. It's amazing how much you can get away with in school as well. cannot be legally employed below 16 here, and even then there's a lot of regulations to make sure you're not being exploited if you're under 18. Good lord. See all this red tape. Getting in the way of some good vocational experience for the kids. And if you've got a pair of hands and can work them, you can cart that old scrap steel over to the furnace. The UK was built off the back of child labour. Someone had to go down those mines and those wee little hands were good for operating the trappers. To turn around and betray all those years of contribution. Sometimes I don't know the country I came from anymore. Yeah, they fed us at work as well. Since there was a cafe next to it, we uh, we always had a big pot of soup in the staff lounge for, for lunch. And you could order a, a piece from the cafe as well. And I actually think that was worth more than what they paid us. Certainly by the prices they were charging it was. I will say this ship's kind of tedious in a way compared to the other ones. Probably because it's just so long and it just has the same kind of uh, connections again and again. I don't begrudge it so much, but I do hope some of the other ones are a bit more inventive with their, in, uh, with their insides and their skeletons. It's probably because it is so flat. Maybe the, uh, the big pudgy mermaid is going to be more interesting since it's got a lot of verticality going. Good bit of controlled demolition later. <laughs> kind of sad that they limit child labour. That's one of the few ways to earn money at that age. I'd take crap wage over being broke any day. Yeah, how are kids meant to make money now? I mean, okay, maybe there's pocket money. What if, what if your family's poor as dirt? Where I grew up, a lot of kids would work on the farm. Not really uh, paid or employed labour, but at least they were learning a vocation, keeping off the drugs, learning some good skills. Of course, they're probably going to be taken over the family farm at some point. Oh hey, Yagamoth! Good to see you. <laughs> You're carrying too much proceeds to throw 50 meters onto a truck. <laughs> yep, this is all a game about being Bangladeshi Superman. We have incredible power. Single-handedly disassembling entire ships, packaging them into boxes and throwing them extremely far. Yeah, I'm off there in chat. An inspirational streamer.
I've seen some of his uh, speedruns, in fact. He does that two controller secret of mana stuff, which is impressive to see. <laughs> right, can we tear apart another chunk of you? That's a yes. Not for this side though, what are we missing? <laughs> do like how smoothly it gets raised into the air there. What are we missing here? Donk! And all done. Not all done. What in the world is missing? The connector. The connector needs to be melted away. It's interesting how labor that's horrendous in real life makes for a chill sim game. That's not too untoward, is it? Think of Grand Theft Auto or Payday. I hardly think holding up a bank is something all that great to do in real life. But oh man do I love running Go Bank in Payday 2. Provided you don't have some idiot Leroy Jenkins on the team. No, I I'm not touching Payday 3. Too many fundamental issues there. Oh yeah, yeah, I I've played a lot of Payday 2 and I love Payday 2, Clearo. I've streamed it a few times as well. Although that's generally just messing around with it because I'd, I'd put an open lobby for anyone in chat who wants to join in. Good times. Payday 2 just... oh yeah. My only real issue with Payday 2 was the... Um, the predatory monetization that it had, but they, they did away with that. You used to get um, loot boxes that you had to pay to open, and I was very surprised that they reneged on that. After all, they reneged on their initial promise not to have... Um, I think they initially just said there's not going to be any paid DLC for it. Or they said there's not going to be loot boxes, something like that, and they went back on it. And that always left a bad taste in my mouth. But the game was so good, I was playing it regardless. Is it is it so unreasonable that a game about robbing banks would want to rob its customers too? Don't get those. Why does Starbreeze keep running into financial difficulties? They've got an extremely successful game, beloved by many, played by many, and they keep paying for it too. Where are they spending all their money on? Maybe legal fees. Drugs. <laughs> Oh, well, they are Swedish-based, so life is expensive. <laughs> Alright, I think I need to go above as well to take out the connectors. And I have almost certainly now destroyed all my ways of going upstairs. So we're going to have to master this rope one way or the other. Yeah. I mean, that's so close to being just right, but we keep banging our feet. 
on that part there. Hmm. And all the rope ladders are gone as well. But I do need to get up there. Well, when in doubt. Use the tools you have available. Get lesser man, that would have been a blocker. Of course, we all know that Bangladeshi Superman here could just fly up, but he needs to maintain appearances. scrapyard. God knows how long we're going to be there for. And it's almost certainly going to be horribly annoying to listen to. But I've just got to know. I really want to know how big the bonus is as well. Oh, oh, hey, we did land on it and get taken away. It's a shame I threw myself off a little too readily. Interesting. There, let's just back you away in case something goes horribly wrong. Uh, something like the truck being stuck. Come on. Ooh, okay. Don't give up hope. Surely we can just shove. 37 tons of material off this truck. Hmm. Perhaps what we need to do is release you from this. There we go. Just popped it back into place. Convenient enough location for chucking our goods into, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon the you are stuck button would also unstick the truck. Probably just resets you to your little shack location like it did when we accidentally threw Bengali man into the grinder. Fortunately, he was immune to that, like he's immune to everything. Yeah, I'm not sure it'd be quite so interesting tearing apart trucks, but surely there are other large vessels like this that could be destroyed and made a fun game out of. Like a house? A castle, a mansion, an aircraft carrier. I suppose that's just another kind of boat, isn't it? How about an aircraft, then? Then you get, um... Get your contract to say, Oh, man, you know, I, I slept through my, my in-flight meal on my last journey. So my contract is for you to pick out three different meals on the plane and uh, get those to me. In addition to scrapping the whole damn thing. Yes, yes, it was hard, spa hard space ship breaker. So you could have this game for spaceships, but that game had its own problems, which we have talked at length about already. I believe what they said was that game was originally intended to be some kind of fighting game. 
well, spaceship fighting games, so spaceships would fight against each other. And then they developed the whole system for parts breaking off, and then they went, well, our fighting spaceship game really sucks. But this system's really good, what can we do with it? And then was born a game about deconstructing spaceships. But since the game was set up to be a game about ships fighting against each other, it was the engine was never that well suited for the deconstruction, so it became very difficult for them to build ships. But hey, it certainly didn't make it difficult for them to make unskippable armchair communism cutscenes. And that's the direction they took their otherwise brilliant game. And it was brilliant. No bones about that. I don't think they were able to take criticism very well on the matter either, though. Nothing wrong with a little communism. Yeah, I'm sure it's a system that will work eventually. But hopefully not in a truly unskippable cutscene format. Yeah, exactly. Wish Hard Spaceship Breaker didn't have a story. I was linked to a mod on Nexus which removes all the story elements. I have not tested it out yet. And I don't think I ever will, because ultimately I'm deflated with that game. I came, I saw, I didn't finish it. I don't I don't want to play it again. The unskippable story was that detrimental to my enjoyment of the game. I just wanted to enjoy kind of that space trucking tune with that grizzled guy softly talking in my ear about his stories of tearing apart ships and drifting off into the furnaces himself. Chipping away at that enormous debt that we have brought upon ourselves. That's all I needed. Winning formula right there. Well, some, some more ships and some custom ships and maybe a workshop element. You know, I'd ask for that as well. No, Jake, join the union. Join the union now. No. It's against regulations to join unions. We signed up for that. We know. <laughs> then the lady just forcibly signs us up against our will. And we're expected to become freaking martyrs for the cause. I Characters just keep on talking as well. E even when you get to the parts where you've escaped the unskippable cutscenes, the characters just keep talking about the stories that I do not want to hear about whilst I'm busy stripping ships. You know what I'm really loving about my situation here in Bangladesh? Nobody's talking to me. I'm not ruining this wonderful Zen experience by having some wacky sidekick chat my ear off like he's in some kind of Disney Pixar film <laughs> what about chat well you guys have your mouth shut your fingers moving that's fine by me maybe there's one or two of the cranky 512 of you who are using some kind of speech to text set up but as long as I don't have to hear it we're all good it's like I would often say about the long dark. Why would I want to ruin my wonderful experience surviving in the Canadian frozen wastelands by sharing it with someone? The free play survival mode in long dark is amazing. The story mode, which is called Winter Mute. That's it, Winter Mute. Huh, on reflection, that's a funny name. So shut up. Anyway, it is awful. 
It is packed full of trite cliches, characters you absolutely don't care about, miserable delivery of story, and it's just altogether an absolutely painful experience. And the thing is, people love it. People keep asking for more of it. One of the most frequent questions on the forums for that game is, when is the next chapter of Wintermute coming out? Where is chapter 5? I want chapter 5. I don't want another second of it, so I'm glad they had to spend some time working on the survival mode. Oh, what a miss. Does the Long Dark have multiplayer? Uh, by standard, no, but there is a multiplayer mod for that game. Which is surprising, considering the game's modding uh, support is non-existent. And the developers seem to hate mods. They even ban talking about mods on the forums. Which is bizarre. Anyway, they seem to hate mods. Don't know why, but in spite of that, there have been some excellent mods made for the Long Dark. I myself use a quality of life mod developed by someone in this community. I am eternally grateful to Von Dougals for that. Well, maybe not eternally, right? I'm not going to give you my firstborn child. Well, yeah, probably. But I'm not giving you my bow staff. <laughs> Every mod made is a DLC feature they can't sell. Yeah, but the modding is prohibitive enough that you, you can't really make features with the modding. But yeah, if you've ever played The Long Dark and you've had 50 cattails in your inventory, and you're starving so you need to eat as many as possible, and you realized your only option is to eat one at a time, then Von Dougal's amazing quality of life mod finally allows you to select the amount of cattails that you eat at one go. You can also check your weight without having to open the inventory screen all the time. And you can also have the exact same item not take up multiple spaces in the radial menu. Oh, so good! Skyrim is still alive today, 12 years after, not because the game is so good, but because of the mods. I have an extreme fear of the Elder Scrolls 6, says Zingus, because Todd plans to let the game live another 20 years. Wait, you mean Skyrim live another 20 years? I don't have a dog in that fight, I'm not big on Western RPGs, but I can imagine it being trepidatious for someone that does. Like you? How are you still staying up there? Fall. There we go. Very little left of this ship, but we are nose to tailing it and we are squeezing every single ton we can into our extremely dense stellinium created truck. Is Starfield actually dying? I know plenty of people that love the game and or really want to play the game. So I'm assuming it appeals to a certain kind of person. Maybe it's going to do like a cyberpunk and bounce back on us. But again, no dog in that fight. I mean, it's even worse Western RPG but set in space. I got no inherent love for sci-fi. And then people go, oh, but you love FTL. Yes, I love it in spite of the sci-fi setting. People have a lot of difficulty coming to terms with that. <laughs> there was a very large group of Skyrim modders that were going to do some mods for Starfield, but stopped because I'm quoting, the game is ass and I can't be bothered. I saw that headline. <laughs> I thought the issue was that the modding tools for... Uh, Starfield were delayed by six months, as in they'd come six months after release. 
Which seems like shooting yourself in the foot. Why would you delay such a, an integral part of your game? Anyway, it's nice not having a dog in the race because I can just sit by and watch the the fireworks go. Well, I don't even watch them. Usually I just ask TBW to fill me in on uh, what the latest races are. For you, train guy. No, there's one last bit. Apparently, there's a vital connection at this point to something. A lot of heavy air, I guess. Wasn't uh, Dark Young playing a fair bit of Starfield? He didn't seem too dismayed by it. Gonna see if I can't take a ride on this thing. The crane guy has fantastic eyes. He knows when things are connected or not. I guess that's why he makes the big bucks up there. That's why he can get away with claiming that he's totally only taking away. Uh, how much? How much of these goods is he claiming to have? Whoa, boy! We have melded. Uh-oh. Well, I said I wasn't going to use this button until I was truly stuck. But I am stuck. Click when you stop. Okay, I stuck. No, come back. <laughs> that would be horrifying, being stuck in that as you get carried over to that grinder. What a terrifying fate. I doubt they'd even know that you went through that thing. they just think, oh, that was a bit of a very oily piece of metal, wasn't it? I guess they had some red diesel in it. All gone. Every last drop. Time to make some good money on the Bing Bing Wahoo. Don't go away and make yourself a cup of tea now. At least not before muting this page. Let's sort it all. What was the beeping not? Wait, what? Why are we finished? Don't tell me auto-sort was already enabled there. No, 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 I wanted to sort all that. Is my save there? Auto-sort was not enabled. Yeah, but it just, it just got rid of everything. I have it, but I wanted to sort it. Maybe I can not save, go back to main menu and load. I want to do the horrible mini game. I know I hate it, but I want to do it anyway. When's this save from? Not very long ago. I don't want 10 minutes ago. Give me the furthest away save you can, please. Okay, here we go. Still got a truck full of stuff. Let's save it now. Maybe you glitched it due to the crane working at the same time. Yeah, I noticed that it dropped off the goodie at the uh, the final moment there. That could have caused it. But yeah, I was certain that the auto sort was not on.
All right, let's do it then. Bring on the perfect sort. This is going to be just this noise horribly for about two minutes. You have been warned. What were they thinking with this? <laughs> and remember, I had every opportunity to avoid doing this, but I insisted we had to. For that perfect sort, though, I want at least a hundred dollars for doing all this recycling work. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> it's so bad. Don't. Two bits of liquids. I think that's liquids. Could be materials. And done! Perfect sort! $133 in my pocket for 532 of those things. Mm hmm. 48 tons of metals, 1.7 tons of equipment, half a ton of liquids, and 1.8 of non-metals. Glorious. And with that, we should be able to afford grabbing ourselves the next big ship I want to do, and that is you, the Witcher. Not the Witcher 3, just the Witcher. Polish destroyer Witcher type. Yeah, the Poles love their witching, don't they? It might seem a little out of my price range, but all of those things that we bing bing wahooed over there can be consolidated down into the glorious Bengalese dollar. Mere store mein aapka swagat hai. None of that makes sense, but just give me... I give you 35 tons of uns... well, I guess they're sorted now, metals. You pay me $700. Are you sure you want to sell? I don't see why not. And that should give us the dough. That's Viher, literally means Gale Wind. Ooh. Do you really want to call your ship the Strong Wind? Mm. Oh, it's, it's got teeth on the front of it. Right, well, I rather think we're going to be having that. The contracts are worth great money. Look at that, if I find the radio set transmitter and TV, you're going to pay me $600 more than the ship is worth. Excellent, absolutely having that. First things first though, we gotta scrap the mariner, which is a very much a misnomer. We're not scrapping anything. We already fully scrapped it. Better than being called the divine winner, oh, don't get me started. Right, let's have a look at what we're getting here. Oh yeah, we blow this one up accidentally. It's a bit more of a dent in the wallet than the last ship was. Uh, yeah. Oh god, that is big! Mmm, man. Feisty as well. I hope you packed a picnic, folks. We're going to be at this one for a fair while. How many parts is it? It's got upper parts and lower parts. And upper upper parts. Does it have cannons? Well, let's inspect the thing before we tear it apart. 
Is this a cannon enough? Oh, I can... I can... Uh, here we've got some radioactive material on board. Didn't it say the ship was from 1930, though? Maybe it's been used as a storage vessel. Hmm. We're going to spend two hours at least... Oh, I'd say at least six hours for this ship. Seems like a big... Well, maybe six hours is over. At least five hours. It is huge, though. Real huge. Gale's better than the Vasa at holding liquid. <laughs> it's level three. I'm quite certain this is not level three. See, we're still getting it done in one go. I think this is level two one. The level three one is the, the big daddy, which costs two and a half grand or so. Oh, there's the beeping noise again. Hmm, man, so many bits and bobs. Really looking forward to tearing this thing apart, which is all the more reason to leave this for the next time. When's that going to be? I don't know. Probably not tomorrow. I mean, I was meant to take yesterday off and I didn't, so I'm going to take tomorrow off instead. I've got some post-Christmas shopping that I want to do. And just some, some time spent not tearing apart ships. But this is what we'll have to look forward to next time we come back to this. Otherwise, I'll be back in a couple of days with... Oh man, I don't even know my own schedule. I was trying to remember, but nothing was coming. Ah yes! We've got House Da Vinci 3 coming up, as well as some other games on Friday. Yeah, maybe more of this, depending on how it goes. And then resuming with the long play of Dave the Diver on Saturday. Probably with some DDR, weekly one-shot and punishment game on Sunday. Alright, looks like I know what I'm doing then, but that means we're done for today. So until I'm back with more, it's a cheers and a cheerio.